the best I can. All right, that's going to have to work for a minute until I can figure something else out legal. How's everybody doing? Before I leave, I wanted to say hi to everybody. Okay. I want to say hi to everybody before I pull out. Um and see if I have any questions before I even leave. What I'm doing today is minor and I might not even be able to make it, but I want to get into the conversation of RVs. I get a lot of emails about my RV and people interested and they have no idea even where to start, what to look for. And I keep threatening that I'm going to do this. This kabucha got me. I keep threatening that I'm going to do a video and, uh, I just never get around to it because I got so much going on. But I said, you know what? Today, I said it's all about tech, travel. This week is going to be solar eclipse week. And that's what we're doing. We're going to talk about everything we need to do about survival from solar power to e-bikes to mini bikes to small engines, RVs, campers, you name it. That's what we're doing because right now that's what we need to be talking about. Okay. Um, your garden, gardening, I'm going to get back into my garden game. Well, I'm doing my garden game now, but I'm going to start broadcasting it again next week. Uh, and my chickens, the whole, the whole shebang. But right now, let's, let's, uh, I think I just seen something that I, oh, I left my glasses. Just, we'll be all right. I think I seen somebody say something. Well, maybe, I, maybe I'm tripping. How we doing, everybody? Good to see you. You want to link with me. You want to link with you for a, a show. I'm starting if you're interested. What do you mean by linking with me for a show? I don't understand what that means. Hey, uh, Demi Homemaker. Time to get serious. It's been time to get serious. That's why I'm just, I'm all around the place, you know. I'm jumping around from subject to subject because it's so much stuff to touch on on so many different angles, on so many different subjects. And if I can help you because I'm in the situation where that's what I'm going to do. How you doing, John Glenn from Louisiana? John Glenn. What's up, M4 Barbecue? While we getting started, it ain't too many people in the house. Does anybody have any questions? Because I'm I'm going to show you the good. This is going to be a long video. Buckle up. If y'all, some of y'all still at work, by the time this video is over, it's, it might even be dinner time because I do not want to rush through this. It's going to be long, so get ready. I'm telling you this in the beginning of the video. It's going to be a long video because nothing that I'm telling you today is cute. Nothing that, what's up, regular gun guy? Nothing that I'm telling you right now is cute. Nothing I'm telling you is a game and some of it will get you killed if you don't do it right. Some of it is uh, everything. Every, all of it is important. OK, all of the information today is going to be important. What's up, Carbon Q? How you doing, young lady? So anybody have any questions? Maintain the powertrain and charging intervals i don't i don't that's not a question I'm, I'm seeing it but it's like what what's what's the question you got to hit me with some details because detailed questions or i won't be able to answer nothing that that vague um haven't you have you given a tour a tour of what oh well are you still? What sh what should a new buyer look for in an RV? Number one, you need to look for. That's a beautiful question. What are you getting it for? What is the price range? That's completely up to you. Is listen. Let's let's get something straight. It's going to answer both of those questions right out the gate. You're buying a home. This is a house. You're buying a house. 
with wheels under the bottom. So the questions to answer all of that ain't no different than you looking for a home or looking for an apartment. OK, I want to just sum that up. I know I'm going to answer that a billion times today, but I need you to understand. Let me get a little more comfortable that when you're looking for an RV, what do you plan on doing with it? Right. Just like your house. What do you plan on doing? Do you plan on raising a family or you, you purchasing a home just so you can get through school, get through college? Are you single? Are you married? Do you have children? All of those factors factor in when you're looking for an RV now. That goes across the board. All of those things take you have to you have to look at that stuff. Very important to check the engine and the roof. Correct. What's the most dangerous hazard in an RV while on the road? Being drunk. You you are the most dangerous hazard. I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about the driver is the most dangerous hazard because remember again. You're driving a big old giant house down the middle of the road and the wind is picking this whole thing up and rocking you back and forth. Not even deers and tires. That ain't that ain't going to do nothing. You're going to smash a deer. You're going to run over a tire because this mug is a beast. You are the most dangerous thing in this whole vehicle. The operator. What about the winter time? What about the winter time? Yeah, I, I need detailed questions, okay? Because I'm like, what about the winter time? I don't know if you know where to go. Are RVs hard to maintain like the septic tank? No. No, they are not. And see, that's what I used to think of years ago before I had my first one. No, it's not. But you better be diligent on... um. You better be diligent on taking care of it, maintaining it. Like as far as cleaning out your sewer tank, before we leave, I'm going to show you guys something. How you doing, uh, John Tucker? Oh, that, is this is this my homie? Just in case, um, your sewage tanks and your water tanks are very important because you got to know when it's going to be a freeze because you need to empty those tanks out because it'll swell up just like in a big ball of doo-doo ice and bust your tanks open and you're going to have a mess. What are the caution signs when buying a used RV? Um, Check your frame. Check your framework. Get your butt up under that, that thing. Check your framework because it might be all rusted out. Number two, check and see if it's been in a flood before. Number three, jump on top of that roof. This is stuff that people do not want to do. If you don't want to get up on top of that roof, I promise you, this is what I do. Look, I'm 250 pounds. Well, not no more. <laughs> um, just say I'm two, I'm around 250 pounds, okay? I'm not getting on the roof. I'm not doing it. Okay. So if you're out looking for a used RV, this is what you need to do. You know, everybody knows somebody with a drone. I have several drones, and I take my drone up and I look all around this roof in detail. So when I'm looking for a house with land on it, I take my drones everywhere. I, I don't release those videos because trust me, they, they're boring. They're boring to people that don't know nothing about drones and other people freak out. Oh my God, he's up in the air looking at people. No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing research. So check your roof. Check your frame of your RV. Check your motor. Most of the time, the motor is solid. Most of them, I've never run into an RV, and I've looked at tons of them. I've never looked ran into an RV. Let's come back here for a minute, okay? And then we'll talk. I've never come to an RV where, um, let's sit here, where the engine is messed up. N never had that problem. Never had that problem. I always had a problem with. The first thing you need to look at is the tires, because I'm going to tell you right now, RV tires. Oh, man, you got to be kidding me. RV tires are not cheap, man. My day, my day is just blood clot. OK, RV tires are not cheap. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to try to get out of here and take you all with me. But I wanted to show you all everything around here so you will understand 
Um, what's going on? Man, it's hot today, ain't it? Can open some windows. So, uh, tires, roof, frame. Check your tanks, all your tanks, your hot water tank, your gray tank, your black tank for leaks. All of that is important. If you don't know how to check that stuff for leaks, start asking the question first and then ask them, is anything leaking? Oh, it always startles people because most RVs leak. Thank God mine don't. Let me see. Is there a backup plan in case you're on the road and the RV breaks down if you're living in it? If you're living in it, is there a backup plan like what? Like AAA? Or you mean if you're I don't live in my RV. If you're living in your RV, your backup plan is personal. Do you have e-bikes with you? Do you have mini bikes? Do you have bicycles? Do you have hiking gear? Are you ready to walk to the nearest town? Do you have protection to do such? All of that is up to you. I have backup plans for my situations, yes, but I do not live in my RV. I used to. <laughs> I used to, not this one, but we used to. How you doing, uh, Sean, Sean Nika? How you doing? That's a long name, my friend. Uh, let's see. Yes, that's a good one, um, Angela. Check if it smells moldy in there or it even smell like, I ain't gonna say, if it smell like poop or old urine, yeah, yeah. If it smell like old urine, either people ain't been taking care of it or there's a leak somewhere. Do you pull a vehicle with your RV? You know, I was going to, but no, um, I opted out and I sold my uh, car tour. I sold it because it's just too much of a hassle when I could just put my trailer on and just put all my mini bikes and e-bikes on my trailer for just in case. But I do, I do tow my trailer. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, who was that? Sh Shawnika. All right, Zach Price. I'm seeing Carbon Q say what's up to you. I ain't seen you yet, but what's going on, brother? I made it in the house today. And Carbon Q, this is all this is all prepping gear right here, too. This this is a major, a major asset to your prepping. I know people don't think they think because it costs so much. Mm -mm. This is major too. This is major just for life situations. Because you can make so many more risky moves when you have somewhere else to go. When you don't have, when you don't have to think about somebody being able to put you out of your house or getting evicted or like I can always just live in my RV. When you got that mindset, don't nothing scare you no more. No, I didn't see your question about uh the Blue Eddy 200 Max. Working on a medium-sized cargo van. Now, see that right there I wanted to touch on because a lot of people are getting into the trend of van life. It's become trendy now. It's not something people just want to do. It's just a trend. And the part that gets me about that, and I, I caution people against it, by the time pe some people finish building out a, a van to live in, You've spent more money than it costed me to buy this. It don't make any sense. Or if you look, and this is my promise to you, I don't know where y'all live. Look on Facebook Market or look on Craigslist and look how many half-built half uh, van life vans there is. Because they get into it with that idea. They done already spent... X amount of money on the van itself. Then they didn't realize lumber cost so much. Then they didn't realize screws cost so much. Screws cost a fortune. They cost them. That's one of the aspects you never really think about. Okay, lumber is high, but did you think about the screws? Okay, after you put the lumber and you decorated it the way you want to, now you got to put on some kind of wall covering, some kind of insulation. 
How many doggone half-built school buses with wooden boxes to lay on do you see on Craigslist and Facebook Market? If you don't believe me, take a second and go look. You'll see half-built school buses, half-built vans, old um, U-Haul trucks. But when you go and you get in and you in it all the way, you will realize, God, I just spent like $30,000. And you could be living in something nice you, where you never had to lift a finger. But I understand that people say, but I want to make it mine. Look, you want to know something? I bought this used and this is how I made it mine. Throw some pillows in that boy, clean him up. You know, I didn't, I didn't want it to smell like mothballs no more. So we got it smelling like a uh, green apple. Make it yours another kind of way, man. Your time is everything. Your time is everything. You ain't got no time to be sitting around, tinkering around, building no van. And you go and look at those van life people and they're going to tell you the same story. Don't get it twisted. Don't fall for the, you living so great and you living so wonderful and you free and you don't owe nobody nothing. That lifestyle that they portray. That's the lifestyle they portray but you always see one of those van life people turn around and do a video like, I'm going home. They'll say, I'm going home because it's more to this than meets the eye. Every time. I, I, don't, I used to be subscribed to a ton of van lifers. And they always go, to, go that route, I'm going home. It's because it's more to it than it is. It's a trip. You know, when you, I come out here and I can wash my junk in my bathroom because I, I'm doing it because I want to because I'm volunteering to do it. These people got to sit there and wash your grapes in a bucket of warm water that you got out the coffee pot. They live out there. They doing it. So after a while, that reality of you really are surviving out here, not just did you have a cold bath today if you had one at all, Did you were you able to get fresh water but now you need to figure out where the hell are you going to park your van because you just can't park it anywhere. You're going to get that. They call it the knock on the door. That's the police or the store manager telling you you cannot park here. That part. Now, um, the other part is you out here unsafe. You might. And I see a lot of young ladies become van lifers. They don't got no way to protect themselves except for the Bible. And that's all good and all, but I, unless you crack somebody across the head real good with that Bible, you go, you go might be in a little pinch, you know? So I'm just saying, I just wanted to get all of that out, the basics, before we get into it. Oh, here's, oh, one other thing. Listen, family, I'm trying to pack this in with information, so bear with me. I said, check your frame, check your tires, check your roof, Check your air conditioners. Check all your heating units. I don't care how uncomfortable the seller is. Make everything work. You tell them, I want you to make it work. If they don't got time to show you how the oven works, how the stove top works, the microwave, the air conditioning, the refrigerator, the freezer, if they don't have time to show you that, there's something wrong. I promise you, somebody that wanted that wants to show you everything work, they know how this go. So you make them. Now I'm not saying it in a mean way, but you demand they show you how to use everything. Make that generator work. Tell them to cut that generator on. And I only want the power inside this RV. Unplug it from your house, sir. Make plug it into the RV, switch it to I mean, switch it to the generator and now make the generator run it. You will run into a lot of people. Well, uh, yeah, I, I haven't done an oil change on it. Oil change ain't got nothing to do with that generator running. It does it work. I mean, yeah, sometime. Don't do it. I'm not saying don't purchase that unit, but I'm saying that's a serious issue because right now. I'm sweating because it's hot in here. If you don't got no AC in the summertime, you'll boil like a lobster in this bad boy. In the wintertime, if you ain't got no heat, man, you trying to sleep on an iceberg? 
mm -mm. you can't watch television and enjoy yourself when you freezing half to death. No. So everything, every appliance in here, even the littlest stuff. You got to make sure it works. Go around with a little plug-in lantern and use every plug and every socket. You want to look at the uh, breaker box and make sure it ain't got bubble gum and, and uh, uh, zip ties on everything. You want to make sure that works. Okay? So, um, any, any other questions? How many... Right, check those breakers. You have to. Any other questions? And remember something else. Don't don't let what my sound went out. Oh, sounds good. Don't let little things keep you away from purchasing a good RV. Thank you, Angie. Thank you for that. Said thanks for this live. You're very welcome. I think that was you that emailed me uh, last night. I think it was. What do y'all keep meaning by how many guys? I know what that is. Let me go back up here real quick, too. There we go. Now we cooking with gas. All right. Uh, let me go back up. Make sure when purchasing, check the tank and make sure the brakes and lights are off. That's, 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 yeah, that's obvious right there. Do you have a diesel or gas engine? I have a gas engine. I opted out of a diesel, even though a diesel will get you more miles per gallon. The price of diesel is so high that it evens out so it's kind of like and diesel is a little bit harder to find in gasoline so i just i opted out of the diesel i just didn't it i used to be a truck driver so that's never really made any sense to me you just bought a pace arrow that's what i used to have what what type of generators do you recommend what do you mean by what type of generators for you in when you buy a rv like what we're talking about because uh a owning Owning generators for RVs are very good. Why didn't you get solar? What do you mean by that question? Diesels are worth it, but a hell of a lot more cost and maintenance. Exactly. And you better not stop nowhere cold or you're going to need to plug that bad boy up to keep those glow plugs warm. Any models to avoid? I don't... You have to just check everything out. You have to just do it, do the research yourself. I've never known any of any specific ones. Some, some of them is just junk. Some of them is great, but the previous owner dogged the vehicle. So, it, you know, it was probably used to be a good vehicle. Like I see a lot of Chrysler 3000s these days. Beautiful vehicle, excellent vehicle, but people dog them. And next thing you know, Oh, I done seen Mercedes the same way. A beautiful Mercedes. The owner took, dogged it. So you just got to do your due diligence and check out all of those functions and check out, like I said, and you still can get a good vehicle. Uh, they have winter trailer and summer trailers. I don't know what that was. So many... So many RV owners refuse to let me get a professional inspection. I've been looking for one for a while now. Well, you know what? I'm going to say this. If you're trying to get a professional inspection, um, when you take a, when you do a, per, uh, let me, let me repeat that. 
If you're trying to get a professional inspection, like to have an inspector come out, a real live inspector, I promise you most RVs will not pass an inspector's um, criteria. It won't pass. Once you drive an RV off of the lot, it gets to twisting and turning. And it's, it's just not going to be up to their standards. You know, you have to know. Now, if you're talking about your cousin, Vinny, that's the mechanic and stuff like that, that's different. Hey, the Weekend Garden Show. I always lose that thumbnail you got. I always lose that. Wait a minute. How you doing, young lady? Say, um, always wanted to know where RVs owners parked. Are there special areas or locations? Yes. There are RV parks there. Some stores will let you park there. We get a little crazy sometimes. I ain't going to talk about that right this minute, but I'll be dipping down corridors and parking this big mug. Um, let's see what we got. A, you, and you don't have, somebody said a smaller setup. Thank you for that. Uh, who just said that? Uh, a Roberts, a smaller setup is better than nothing at all. Can put a solar on anything. Right. Thank you for that. You don't have to have an RV this big. Number one. Number two. I don't. They're coming out with the brand new RVs with solar already attached and everything in it. To me, that's such a waste of money when, look, all you got to do is buy your doggone. I still got the FF power in here. All you got to do is buy you a solar power generator that will power this whole RV. And when I hook the doggone solar panels to it, it'll power this whole RV. So... Yeah, I, I wouldn't spend an extra $10,000 just because it got one of those up under the, the chassis back there. Uh, let's see. Uh, we were thinking about a fifth wheel instead. Okay, you know, I just... every Everybody like fifth wheels. I never got into it. Like I said, I used to drive trucks. It's just so much stuff that can go wrong with those. If you... It all just depends. If you're going for a fifth wheel, go for it. If that's your thing, do RV parks charge a lot? Oh, no. That's love your question. I wish I had my kombucha. Y'all got me hooked on that. Uh, do, do you recommend RV slide out, pop out? Tyler, ask that question again. Uh, let me go back to this question. What was the question? Oh, do RV parks ch charge a lot? No. That's why everybody is starting to purchase RVs and campers. Thank you, Rio's family. Uh, we've been looking for RVs a minute now, especially, especially so we can travel with our disabled son. We got to get it. Amen. Thank you for that. Listen, that's why everybody is buying RVs and campers, pop-ups, pull-behinds, fifth wheels. And this is why. Because when we go camping, Say you go to a camping a camping spot. You can go anywhere around the country. You if you live in this, you live you live in America. You literally live wherever you feel like living, okay? Now they might charge $50 a night. If you whatever spot you get, normally our spots that we usually go up in Myrtle Beach, uh um Virginia Beach, Myrtle Beach, Florida, them spots will cost you like $50 to $75 a night. That's a cheap, dirty motel, right? Okay. So if you stand in a spot in your own house, you don't got to worry about bed bugs. You don't got to worry about your neighbors. Uh, thank you, TD, uh, TV Freedom. You don't have to worry about um, nothing. You got water, your own water, your own food, and you can go see whatever sites you want to go see. You can go wherever in Florida you want to. See, that's the thing. There's no limitations. You can go wherever you want. You can go wherever you want. You don't got to worry about bringing a, a black light with you when you about to lay down on this hotel bed. If you dig what I'm saying, adults listening to me. That always freaks me out. 
I actually, hey, Black's Tropical Homestead. It's good to see you in here. I always, literally, I know this is kind of lightweight, bougie, but it ain't. It give me the creeps. I bring my own linen. I tell them immediately, Can, could y'all could take that linen off these beds? But you want fresh? No, thank you. When I stay in, in the condos and stuff, that's how it is. Uh, let me see. Are there certain tires you recommend? No, you just got to make sure the tires are for your terrain, your area, and what kind of driving you plan on doing. Are you driving through the snow? This is no different than an automobile. It's, you know, what kind of tires do you think you need for your car? Like snow, all season, that's what you're going to need for your RV. Yes. Um, that. Thank you, Angela Baker, for that. You know, I don't got to bring no towels. I don't got to bring no, I don't got to bring nothing. Okay, Tyler, thank you for that. Do you recommend RVs with slide out pop outs? I didn't used to. I didn't used to. I used to think that was ridiculous until my wife would not. She kept giving me a hard time when we was looking for this one. I kept saying, I don't care about the slide out. She said, I need the slide out. Because when the whole family is in here, it's going to make a big difference. Now, I got to be honest. I, I fought with my wife tooth and nail about it, y'all. I'm telling the truth. I, I've seen a lot of nice RVs that didn't have a slide out. And I promise you, we found this one for dirt cheap on my way home. I, I kid you not. And it had this slide out. And it was a bonus for her. But I was like, I don't even care about that. My wife, wanted, she asked the man, can you make this slide out? And I was like, man, you ain't got to do that. She said, sir, can you make this slide out? Listen to me, family. And this is a personal, real experience. When he made this, when he made this slide, I got to fix my words right because that sounded a little gross. When he made this RV pop out, this what I'm sitting on right now, this whole thing slid out. It was like a living, it becomes a, a big apartment. So, our first journey was my whole family was in here and we slept comfortably because every seat you see turns into a bed, lays down into a bed. The couch I'm sitting on turns into a bed. The kitchen table turns into a bed and I got a king size bed in the back room back there. And then when you hear, let me stop showing my, my grapes. Uh, <laughs> Here's the best part. When you slide this out, I need to show y'all this. When you slide this whole side out, see this? This is the slide. When this goes out there, this floor doubles in size. So we even got fold-up beds and blow-up beds back there in the closet that we lay down for the kids. So all the adults are comfortable and all the children are on the floor comfortable and everybody can get around and get back to the bathroom. Now, that's another one. If you, won't, if you don't know, I'm about to tell you. Every person that's in your RV when, you, when you're doing your business, when you're leaving, the more people you got, the more you need to empty that, that, um, that mud bucket. Stay on top of that. If you are in an area, let me move that so okay. If you are in an area where you can you can just run a hose to a pipe, you know, like an RV park, do it. If you are not in an area where you can drop your tube and keep it down, I suggest you get a travel along. What's up, uh Sunday backyard farmer? I suggest you carry with you a travel along um, septic tank. That's what we got. Yes, a weekend garden show, the mud bucket. Nobody want to be doing that. Lady Led ain't no joke, though. I always be like, man, I don't feel like doing that. She's like, come on, I'll help you. She don't be no joke with it. And it just seemed like she just wouldn't want to do that. But she gangster with that. She don't care. Yes, I got a rhino. I use all rhino products. The only reason, and I'm not endorsing them at all, but I use Rhino products because they are revolutionary. If you have an RV, you know what I mean by Rhino. It ain't that I'm popping their name out like that. I'm talking about everything that they make, 
makes everything easier. From draining your tanks, to cleaning your tanks, to flushing your tanks. I go with Rhino. I This bus came with some used stuff. Got rid of that. But I bought some knockoff brand stuff. And I was like, when I first got it, I'm like, man, this stuff is it's a pain in the, the butt, you know. And then I did more research. That Rhino brand. Rhino. I'm going to show you guys. I, I don't want to stop this video to go get everything. But it's important. I might have to show you. Okay. We back on the question. I bought a Rhino sewage hose. Uh, they are epic with durability. Not just durability. Get the one that can also hook the hose to it and turn and clean your pipe out. Oh, it's a little bit more money, but I swear, I promise to you, it is worth every cent. And cut your cleaning time of your tanks literally in half, if more than half. Because you don't got to keep going inside using up your clean water to flush it all out and you ain't got to keep calling someone okay flush the toilet you ain't got to do that rhino rhino you can hook your holes and everything to it and do everything outside and you ain't got to move okay any let me get back in here because i get excited this this is an exciting topic for me can you fix your rv mechanical parts without going to a mechanic all the time that's a question that's common sense if you can fix your car my here's my engine once i move this big old hill my engine is right there i don't even have to be outside messing with the engine everything i need to do on top of my engine is right here so yes you can you can do it all yourself if you have the right tools you got to use your common sense if you have the right tools to fix it of course you can there is nothing special on this as a matter of fact this is more simple than, than my truck. This Working on this is more simple than my truck. The only difference is, remember, this is a house. Love is a house. Ooh, let me stop tripping. Uh, the fuses, just like your house, check your fuses. Just like your house, make sure your windows is closed. Everything you do in your house, you got to do here. Thank you, uh, Tank Dog. What's up, man? Say, living in a hurricane zone, it's a great feeling when you can just pack your RV and don't have to worry about fighting over hotel rooms. Ah. Damn, that was powerful. That was powerful. That was powerful. Um, Yes, bruh. Yes. When you, when you need to get away, it's a lot of people that when they keep going through these storms, most, one of their problems is they, they go out of town and they think they're going to go on a whole day. For instance, Floridians. Floridians come to either Georgia or South Carolina when the storm is coming down there. They ain't got nowhere to stay because when those storms be hitting, it's always that part of the season, like around St. Patrick's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, when the seasons change, is when the hurricanes happen, right? Well, other people coming into our states for the holidays, taking up all the hotel rooms and everything. So if there's a storm, people come from Florida and Louisiana up here is rough. So have an RV, you always got somewhere to stay. Uh, let me see. Somebody just asked a question I missed. Do you recommend financing an RV? That's a personal question. I'm going to touch. I'm going to give you our experience. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I would not. I wouldn't. If you're already financing your home, absolutely not. I bought this cash money. I say, I say, just save your chips and buy you an RV if you're able to do it. Don't finance one because that's just one more bill, one more note on your and debt on your back that you got to. I had a young lady um, tell me that, like, why would you buy such an old RV um, when you could have just bought a brand new one? I, she said she she only she paid like. 40,000 or something for hers. And uh, 
I said, yeah, I only paid 10000 for mine. She said, but why would you buy that old RV when you could? Because it's mine. It belongs to me. I don't owe a single soul for it. And mine run just as good as yours. I guarantee it. So she had a brand new like 2021 model. This was last year. And I promise you, family, you know what? why she can't sleep good at night? Because she got to worry about. Now, she is a van lifer. She's a van lifer. Okay. You out there supposed to be living free. That's the whole premise of the van life, right? Well, why are you out there with so much debt on your back trying to pretend to be a van lifer? The whole van lifer is because you don't want to you don't want to pay the man. OK, right. You don't want to you want to stick it to the man. You don't want to owe the man. So why are you out there living in a damn van or RV, but you still got to go to work so you can pay the man for the RV? That van life stuff, I told you, it ain't all what it seem all the time. Don't 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 get. Uh, jaded by that that garb them videos so yeah my rv is older but i promise you it being around the world and i yeah yeah i got a whole two doggone drawers full of maintenance books how it's been maintained for 15 straight years so if the man one owner one owner one man and his wife one owner all the maintenance records is right here up under this, this couch. So, um, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't go to bed at night wondering when is the next payment due on my, on my bug out bus. Nah. So that to me, if you got it like that, then yeah, go, go ahead. I'm not going to discourage it, but I wouldn't me. I wouldn't. The other ones we had, I owned them too. I bought them outright. Would have preferred a, a used good one owner RV. And you know something? They're hard to find these days, the used ones. Is there a recommended length that will fit inside most RV parks? No, no. Any any length of fit in, in an RV park, you have to contact You have to contact the um the RV park that you plan on going to. It's just like going on a vacation. Like, do do you guys um have space for a 32-foot RV with a trailer? Do you have any spaces left for that? Uh, what steps can a lady take when purchasing an RV to not get ripped off? I don't even know how to answer that. If you, if you don't know what you're doing, you have to go do research first. That's what, that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm giving you a couple tips, things to look for. If you don't have a clue about an RV, don't go buy nothing until you know more about them. I promise you, do this. This is what I did for years before I bought my first one. Just go to a RV um RV salesperson, the RV set where they sell RVs, jump inside and outside of each and every last dog on one they got on the lot. They don't mind. They're bored. Um, go to a place where they sell RVs and campers, get in, get out, jump in, jump out of all of them. You will start realizing things you like, things you don't like. Write that stuff down. Things you want, things you don't want, things to look out for. You, that's how you do it. You window shop for, for your RV. And I promise you, over time, you will know exactly what you want in an RV. Like I didn't know I wanted a slide out until my wife was like, she did the research on this. I didn't do research on slide outs. I wanted to make sure it had a strong engine and a strong chassis and a, a non-leaking roof. Uh, I'm kind of wondering with gas prices now and people that ditch van life, if there may be some more coming available, um, they're trying to offload. I'm sure it is. 
I went to an RV show a couple of weeks ago. I definitely helped. It definitely helped me narrow down what's perfect for me. That's there. You go. Go to these RV shows. Go to these these uh, events like that. I promise you, you will know exactly what you wanted. Wow! I just realized how that short remark. Look, it was just a. I don't know what that was. Um. Okay. I can't park it in my driveway. Ha ha! Good, good, good statement. I'm sure I'm going to put it in the question form. That's another thing. Listen. No, don't. Somebody said, take a dude with you to do. Check it out. That don't mean he know anything either. Do your own research. Don't rely on anyone. Do your own research. Because if somebody go and say, this is a good one, you just bought that person an RV because you bought what that person likes. No, no, no. You go and do your own research so you know what you like. And when you, if you end up taking somebody with you, then you can tell that that person might be like, oh man, this guy, this got uh the V12 in it. You like, I don't like V12s. I kind of want to keep it around a V10, V8. Oh, but that V12, I don't want that. See what I'm saying? So you you cannot bypass doing your own research. Um, somebody oh oh, can you park it in your driveway? That's my other big big thing to look out for. Where are you gonna put it? That's major. <laughs> That's major. Where are you gonna put your RV? And the reason I'm telling you that is because. I had a I had a whole driveway poured about a month or two ago just for my RV so I could park my cars in my driveway and get off of my hill that I was on. Uh some HOAs don't like RVs. I ain't even gonna talk about HOAs no more. If people decide they want to live in an HOA, I, I just I ain't gonna get into that because people don't like when I talk about HOAs. I don't see who would want to live in an HOA community. Um so I don't like parking my RV in RV storage spots. And I'm going to tell you why. What do you do about getting a U-Haul and turning into a mobile home RV? Yeah, that's, that's turning that thing into a van life. I don't suggest nobody do it. I ain't going to lie to you. If you got time, you got money to burn, Go for it. I'm I don't I don't suggest nobody try buying these school buses, old U-Haul trucks, and then you see a video on YouTube and you think yours is gonna look as good. Did y'all see that one guy? Uh I'm not sure what nationality he is, but he like either Hispanic or Indian. I can never quite make out his his accent. Did y'all see that they busted him out on uh on YouTube? Because he was showing people about his life or how he started with nothing and built this, this like uh this RV, uh, not an RV, but a, a van life out of this truck, like a U-Haul type truck, like a FedEx truck. Did y'all see that one? And then his fans busted him out and found out this dude rich. <laughs> this dude filthy rich. And now the internet, the internet tore his butt up so much he got rid of his channel and everything. Did y'all see that dude? Because he had inspired the world to go out there buying old FedEx trucks, U-Haul trucks and stuff. And when I say his stuff, listen to me. His, his, what he had done to that FedEx truck made all this look like trash. Everything was digital. Everything was solar power. Every fold out, flip out beds, all of that stuff. And he got everybody like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. This was like a year or two ago. Next thing you know, I seen him. It's on like on Google or something it popped up in my feed. They tore his butt up, ridiculed him off the channel. He's still rich, but he he had thoughts of doing harm to himself. Because 
people found out what he did and they've been tearing him up from all around the world. Okay. So when once people got inspired to do that and realized that he kept saying stuff, you know, I found some old wood on the side of this building and I made it out of some pallet wood. He would get a pallet and you will see him tearing it apart. But then you have his architects and stuff come in after the video and finish it up and then show you the finished product. And it's all glossy and, you know, it looks like cherry wood. I was like, wow. You don't believe me? Look on Craigslist and Facebook Market and look how many half-built school buses, how many half-built FedEx trucks, UPS trucks, and uh, uh, U-Haul trucks there is. Because those people have no, you think you're going to save money by buying a big van and converting it into what I'm sitting on right now for free. It ain't going to work. Hey, New Orleans Garden. Hey, Lil Notes. What's going on, t Nog? It's not going to happen. So, all right. Any any other... Oh, oh. Where are you going to park it? The reason I don't like RV storage facilities, because every single time, I don't care how nice they are. I've had a couple of nice ones. You're going to get something stolen. Um... You're going to get, would you pay $100 a month for a space? Heck, heck yeah. $100 a month for a, a, a space to park my RV? Like, if I'm in it, you mean? Or you mean for storage? I wouldn't park my, I don't, I would never park mine on no storage again. Never. Because you get stuff stolen. You will come to your RV, get ready to go on a trip. Your TV missing. Your door is swinging wide open. One of your tires is gone. Your gas is always gone. Somebody always steal your gas. Part, little parts of your RV keep missing. Parts of your generator or your whole generator is gone. If you, When you park at these, uh, or you might come, which I've heard a story a long time ago, you might come to your RV and you got a whole nother dude living there. Think about it. He living good in your RV while it's in some RV park. He sneak in and sneak out at night. You know, go live his life during the daytime. He like Batman. And at night he, he get back in here, get some sleep, make him some sandwiches, everything. I said, for the price that it costs you for one year, think, for one year, the price that it costs you at uh, RV storage facility, if you add up how much it's going to cost you to store your vehicle for one year, you can have a driveway poured for your vehicle on your property. For that same amount of money for the next year, which I'm going to do next year, I'm going to have extend my driveway even further and put an awning over top of my vehicle so I can roll my RV up under shade, shaded area. So, I can't make this stuff up. If y'all own RVs or campers, would y'all please testify? Because I promise you, I can't I can't make this stuff up. Any questions? I, let me get me something to drink real quick because it's hot in here and I'm getting a little... I'm getting a little toasty. Let's see. Okay, there we go. I don't um I don't have nothing really in here to drink. You gotta make sure you keep everything. Ooh. I'll do that. <laughs> How many of y'all like, lad, don't drink that? They got a recall on Tang. Ah. That's for some suckers. It's real OG stuff right here. I don't got, oh, wait a minute. Here we go. I'm going to show y'all one of the things I use when I'm when I'm traveling. This is what I drink out of. Old school, y'all know I drink out of jars. But I when I'm camping too, when I'm out here, this is, let me, let me make sure because my son was the last one to do dishes in here. You know them kids, man. You get you a, you know, hit that tang, son. Get your tang right. 
get that tea. I'm thirsty as all get out. I didn't think it was gonna be this hot today. Let some ventilation up in this boy. Uh, let me see. I'm about to tear stuff up. What is? Oh, uh, Kelly said what Led is saying is true. I would never. Y'all saw how my RV was parked on my in my driveway before I had this part built. I wasn't going over there, man. I was not parking my RV nowhere. It's gonna be right here, and everybody in my neighborhood got their RVs up in their yard too, cause they. I'm sure there's a lot of really nice RV storage facilities around us. But I promise you, uh, I promise you, you don't see them parking theirs. And these people got money. Don't get it twisted. Don't don't even think I got it like them. All right, so. Uh, let me bring y'all back over here. Okay, now I might be able to get something done. Any questions? Have you ever caused a mess trying to empty the mud bucket? Nope, never, never. Because if you if you buy the right equipment, you buy that Rhino stuff, you don't got to worry about no mess. I've never even got any on my hands. Led, do you feel you cook smaller meals on a roll or still stay the same? Well, when I go, it ain't like I'm on survival mode. So we really, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, How does the toilet work? The same way your toilet work in your house. Um, We eat whatever, I mean, the only reason I would say we eat smaller meals is because we so busy out having fun. So we just don't sit around eating all day like you would do it in, in your house. Show us the Rhino product. Seeking truth. I'm going to go get it, okay? It, it's going to take me a couple of ticks because I, I wasn't ready. But yes. Oh, goodness gracious. So, I'm going to show you the Rhino uh, mud bucket, okay? I'm going to stop calling it that. The portable septic tank. I told you this video going to be long because I want to try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. And I really want to go for a ride. Uh, the pedal flushes the toilet and you can add water per flush. Um, the water, my, my water comes as it come out. Thank you, Tony. When I when I used to truck drive, I kept a small camping portal potty. Yeah, we ain't got to do that in here, not necessarily. I do keep a listen now. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I do keep a um, a, a bucket, a five-gallon bucket with the little toilet lid on it because sometimes when I got a lot of people in here, everybody can't fit in the bathroom at the same time. Somebody might be washing up. Somebody got to do it. You know, say, uck it and go to the bucket. For real. Do you have a place to grow stuff at, at the RV park? No. Why? Why would I be trying to grow stuff? If if you're going to an RV park to live, yeah, you can go grow whatever you want to. And you have to make those reservations. You have to make sure you got what you want. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I've I. Oh, you said I. Uh, NC says I saw a creative RV episode where I learned about frozen pipes. Yeah. And they bust your black pipe bus. Oh my God. Oh. What do you think about Airbnb in an RV? That's totally up to you. That's personal stuff. <laughs> Those are personal questions. What do you think about an Airbnb? Listen, let me let me let me get, get this to you. Because I don't think the, the concept is quite getting to you, you guys. We're gonna go for a ride, smile. I'm going to show you that septic tank and then we got to go. Listen to this. When you own an RV, there aren't too many limitations. Why even, why would I even go to an Airbnb and I'm in an Airbnb? I need you to, I need y'all to use your common sense. This, listen, family, oh my God, I'm going to show you again. I am literally in my second home. 
I am in my home. Why would I park at an Airbnb? Did you see what I just did? I went and got me something to drink out the refrigerator, mix it up with my own stuff, and I could go back there and take me a dump if I feel like it and go take a nap after that. I could sit here and watch television if I feel like I don't have to go back in my big house out there. Everything I want, I got music, I got food, I got air conditioning, everything you can name that's in your house right now, I got it. The only thing ain't out here, uh, the only thing out here that I don't have to fit my creature comforts is my wife. Right now, all the things that I love to how I love my comfort is right here. And the only thing missing is my wife. And all I got to do is walk 30 feet away and I see her. Uh, I think he asked, what, what were you think about renting out your RV for Airbnb? If that's the question... I don't know. I think that question is worse than the first one. Really, if I misconstrued it. If he meant rent your RV out, your RV out to a bunch of strangers all the time, why would you do that? I get it. Like beach houses, right? If you're going into business to do that, yes. But if you're you you saying I'm gonna be making money off my RV. And in the meantime, when I feel like going on a vacation, I'm going to use my RV. But while it's just sitting around while I'm at work stuff, I'm going to rent it out to a bunch of strangers that might be doing it all in your bed, might be murdering people and picking up whores and stuff. You don't know. No, not me. I mean, to each his own. I didn't buy this to rent out. I didn't buy this to make me more money. If I wanted to make more money, if I wanted to do that, I could go in business doing that. But this is for me. Um, no, I don't want nobody. I listen, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna keep it all together real. I don't even, I don't even want to really invite too many people in here that I don't know, period. Yeah. Really. This this is how I look at it. And again. And again, I'm going to I'm gonna put it to you like this. Family. I know it got wheels on it and an exhaust pipe hanging out the back. This is my home. I need you to understand that. And until you own one, you won't get it. This is my home. My personal items are in here. I've spent personal moments in here. I only had it for a little over a year, but I've spent personal private times in this. My whole family been in here. You understand sharing love and sharing affection with one another and enjoying crazy times. I don't want I don't want to share that with strangers. This is my home. Is this ain't a car. This ain't a car. When you in a car, you let anybody in your car. I don't let anybody in this. I don't. Would you give a friend a hundred dollars a month who lives in the country store? I don't, I don't. If you would you give a friend a hundred dollars a month who lives in the country to store for you? I don't even understand that question. I wouldn't give no, I wouldn't. I don't understand the question, but what I made of it, I already explained it. I only want to keep my RV at my own house. Un until, because you don't know what your friend going to do with your stuff. Friends is only friends as far as much as you know what they do when they until they gone. I don't trust, man, maybe I got trust issues, I guess. I don't know. R thank you for that. Uh, What's your name? I can't pronounce your, your name at all. It's, it's a lot of, but it's an intimate place. It's my home, you know? Right. It's my home. Uh, did your kids camp in it with friends in the yard? The kids camp in it with friends in the yard. I don't know what that means. If you talk about a, 
that my kids, uh, you might not be talking to me. Because I know you don't mean I'm pulling a 32-foot RV in my yard and couldn't be talking about this. I don't know what that man is. Uh, any other questions? Basically, he's saying everybody isn't allowed in his RV just like they aren't allowed in his house. There you go. It's private. It's 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 my spot. Um. <clears throat> any any questions? Any questions? What's going on, Rucker Homestead? Where do you store your water? I think it's time that we we get out and we do a little look around. Um. Oh, thank you for that. Do my kids camp on the outside of the RV? No, we got enough space for everybody to be in here, but I keep tents underneath just in, in the storage uh, banks outside just in case we have visitors. But yes, I get what you're saying now. Thank you for that. I was like, I don't understand the question. So far, we've never had to do that. But I'm I'm ready for it. How you doing, Kizzy Stacks? Guava, welcome to the Greenhouse Lounge. Will you rent an RV or buy an RV? Oh, my goodness. I would never, ever, ever rent one. Never. Um, you want to know why I would never rent one? Because by the time it has anybody ever rented an RV by the time they're done calculating the distance you're going, the gas you use and the time you'll be using it. You could have bought one. Okay. Liberty prime. Exactly. Thank you, sapper. I don't know what that was, but thank you. You good, Rhonda. Uh, rent a trailer is much cheaper to rent. I would never rent an RV. Never. If you look at how much it costs by the time you, you're you done with... Woo! You could have you could have bought one. You could have saved another good 5000 and just bought you one. I've tried that years ago. Um, Thank you, Kizzy. Liberty Prime said cheaper to rent trailers than drive an RV. Che cheaper to rent. Cheaper to rent a trailer. You want to hear something? I, I'm, can I tell y'all something personal? Why I I don't um I prefer a RV over a camper. And this is this is different for everybody because I know a lot of people like campers. A lot of people like basically the camper is like a fifth wheel. Well, no, I don't like them. There, no, I don't have any damn issues in mind. I don't like them because I like when I'm driving down the road, my whole family is right here with me. Legally, you cannot have nobody in that camper while you driving down the road. If you in your pickup truck and you pulling this fifth wheel, the only people you can have with you is the only people that can fit in that pickup truck. That's it. You can have nobody alive legally in that camper back there. Nobody. That's illegal. Because number one, if somebody get up and use the bathroom, that is a dramatic sh uh, shift in weight. And if that trailer start doing that tongue way to go to shifting and you are flipping and, and no, oh my God, no. And then the things that you have inside the camper better be secure. Look, I can drive down the road with all this. It can be sliding off the table, busting up everything, ice maker, everything falling out. It ain't going, it ain't going to affect my driving at all. Uh, Okay, that's a good question. What type of license leg can you uh what type of license do you need for an RV? None. Nothing. None. None. 
None at all. So as far as a camper, they're great. They're beautiful. I, I, I do like them. I wouldn't want one personally because I love when I'm riding down the road and my mom is sitting right here. Look, let me give you a little visual, a little POV. You know, my mom will be sitting right here. I'm sitting right here. She can look over and see me. I can look back and see my mama. My wife got the chair turned around. My wife and my mama sitting here playing cards. No, you don't need no CDL. Nope. My sisters and my brothers is right here on the couch watching TV. They might be watching TV or, and then I got my nephews and my nieces sitting at the table, you know, drawing on a tablets or whatever. You know, my aunt might be in the back taking a nap. My other sister that's prissy, she might be in there washing her hair all while I'm riding down the road at 70 miles. Now, we hear laughing, music going, TV going, all while we're riding down the road. I'm getting that family love. And on top of that, the sights that you seeing while you riding and we chilling ain't no ain't no replacement for that. I, you know what? I ain't gonna lie to you, man. That almost made me want to cry right now because it's 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 so beautiful. Yeah, all you need is a standard license. It's such a beautiful thing, man. You know, when your grand, I ain't got no grandkids, but my nieces and nephews like my grandkids. When you got your grandbabies, little babies running around, you know, and when you finally get to your destination, because here's the sweet part. You ain't got to stop to pee. You ain't got to stop to pee. You ain't got to stop for food. You ain't got to keep hitting the golden arches, family. You ain't got to keep hitting Brit Mai. Uh, get rid of that one. Get rid of that. Because I don't, I don't know what that is. P please, Brit Mai, if you see, just, just get rid of it. Aim for the head. If you, you don't got to stop for food. So ain't nobody getting sick on the road from eating that garbage. Because somebody from the last stop we was at, we still eating that barbecue from last night. Thank you, Brit Mai. Thank you, dear. Thank you, sweetheart. We still eating that barbecue from last night. The only pit stops is when we stop so I can stretch my legs. Thank you, Britt. You know you the one. And then my wife might even want to take over driving. Man, you don't got to stop. You don't got to stop. And in a car, you know, you cramped up like this. You know, man, when I'm driving, I'm like this. Like you see this couch? This is me when I'm driving. So it's like I'm just sitting back. This big old window is like I'm watching TV. Uh, what is the farthest you've driven? That ain't, that's that's neither here nor there. I wanted I my experience as far as what I do, I want you to get do your thing so you can have experiences. You don't gotta live vicariously through me. I swear. Because some people look at these as like bougie type crafts. If you want to go glamping, go for it. But for the most part, it's survival. And man, spending time with your family. Uh, oh, 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 going out of town. I got to go. We got to go to, listen, we got to go to Mississippi soon. Her people got to go to her family in Mississippi and you know it's not always nowhere to stay and you got 50 miles in one way to Yazoo City and 50 miles the other way to go to Belzoni to even find a hotel room from where she from my wife is from right my wife is from Louise Mississippi so you got a hundred miles in both directions to go find somewhere to sleep because everybody got small houses, you really can't, and you don't want to be putting nobody out, you know. So, when you take this, you don't got to ask no questions. You just pull over, boom, you, you brought your house with you. 
Literally. Uh, you said I ain't got to stop to pee unless I'm driving. No, I don't. I tell people, close your eyes. <laughs> Hand me that orange juice bottle. <laughs> Did you buy the RV furnished as it is? Um, All RVs come with furniture in it. This stuff is bolted to the ground, bolted to the frame. Yes. Now, I put the little pillows in there. And we bought a new mattress for the bed. We bought a new mattress for the bed and, you know, my own cover sheets, towels. Yeah. But no, it literally comes this way. How you get water for your RV? There's a water connection on the side of the bus that you just hook your water hose to and fill up your tanks. So before we go, thank you, Britt Mai. Before we go, I guess I'm going to take you all on a tour to actually show you where all of this stuff is, okay? And then we try to get out of here. RV newbie here, do you need a special license to drive an RV? No, you do not. None whatsoever. Okay, how often do you have to stop and refuel? I, I have... I've never had to stop and refuel. With all the places I've been, and remember, I'm in I'm in Columbia, South Carolina, so I've been to all parts, Florida, Ohio, um, the coast. You never got to refuel because it ain't like you're going across country. You know, uh, this is a big tank. I think it's a, I want to say it's a 100-gallon tank. Um, I want to say it's a 100-gallon tank. RV insurance. That's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you, Renita. Renita, that's an excellent one. Your RV insurance is just like your car insurance. That's another reason I like to park my RV at my house over parking it at a storage because part one of the questions, thank you, Renita, for that. One of the questions is when the insurance people, where are you parking it at? Right? If you park it in a storage facility, like I said be before, if you park it at a storage facility, your insurance go up because they know you're going to get robbed. If you park it at your house, you got two good things going for you. One, your insurance rate for this goes down. Number two, now if something is to happen to this RV on my in my driveway, right? My homeowner's insurance also kicks in because this is no different than having my car in my driveway. Right? It's right it's literally feet away from my home. So not only does my RV insurance kick in, but so does my homeowner's insurance kick in. So it's a win-win-win situation. The f right, uh, love notes. The farther away you park this, the more your insurance costs. Yes, even acts of God, like if the tree fall, if the tree fall or some a branch. Yes. Um. So that was a good question. Uh, let me see. How long does the heat last inside when RV overnight? The heat, my heat is propane, but I rarely use it. I always use, I'm going to show you what I use to heat up this whole mug. You ain't even going to believe it. I show this on all my videos. I kid you not. We don't hardly even use the, the propane heater. We use little space heaters. It heat up this whole thing. So I got a couple of these. That's it. So I'm going to go check my propane is what I'm supposed to be doing today. My my whole plan was to go have uh 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 Andale, thank you, but aim for the head, sweetheart, please. I that's crazy. Um just space heaters. But if I cut the heat on, 
um, you got two things to worry about when you do stuff like that. Are you plugged into a landline? That means are you parked at an RV park or something with the plug going? You got your plug plugged into out power out there. Or are you running your generator to run the furnace? Or are you running your solar power generator to run the furnace? Because you got propane, but you still need something to run the furnace, the fans in the furnace. Would you use a kerosene heater if everything else was out? No. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that risk. You're in a tiny space with kerosene going, no, I, I need you to do a little more research, okay, on that one. You'll kill yourself. I need to, listen, let's, let's think, let's think here. Um, do you like the Watchdog Hardwire Surge Protector? You know what? You know what? That's a good question. Uh, what's your name? crazy ways i saw i don't know if it was called the watchdog but i've been looking at them they cost like a like a hundred and some change like 150 dollars i i think i know what you're talking about and trust me i i do want to invest in a surge protector because i've been to some rv places where stuff get a little weird you know the water smell a little funky the electrical boxes is all over there, you scared to plug your RV in? Like, if I plug, it, 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 it's like it's like sex. You don't want to plug your plug into this socket because it's all beat up, it's dirty, it's not maintained. You know, it's you don't know where that smell coming from. When you go to an RV park or something, you think about that before you plug your RV into their grid power. You like that's gross. Um. Is somebody going to come fix this and look at this real quick? The door hanging off? You really do. It's literally like almost like making love before you lay down. You know, once this socket is in, it's, it ain't like Usher said, ain't no going back from here. You know, Usher said it. Ain't no going back. So you better take a second. And I promise you, it was one night. It was I ran into one questionable one in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> I ain't going to call out the place. I said, listen, that's when I had the Blue Eddy AC200P. I said, we're going to run that solar tonight until I can talk to somebody at the office about this. I need to, you know, we're going to just plug this into. The, so, y'all, tonight, uh, no TV and stuff, okay? We just survival equipment tonight. We need to figure out what's going on here. So, yeah, they, they confirmed it and checked it first before I needed that thing to go get uh, uh, get tested. <laughs> before I plug my plug into that. <laughs> that was unkept, to say the least. So, when you when, think about this family, I know it sounds like I'm, I'm tripping, right? This is my home. I don't want to put, I don't want to, what's the word for it? Uh, you know, everything, you feel like everything else got germs. You know, I don't want my home to be infested or contaminated. That's the word I'm looking for. I don't want to contaminate it with no other gross stuff. This is my home, so I don't want you to blow out my fuse panel because y'all stuff got garbage. I've been to, I've been to a, uh, a RV park where I won't use their water. I've been several times I will not use their water enough. Trust and believe me, family. Your water, even in your tanks, I don't care how clean your tanks are, your water always tastes a little plasticky. It always tastes a little different, you know, even in your own tanks. I'd rather drink my own tank water than plug into some people's grid water. I won't do it at some places. So, I have a lot of water filters. We use our Berkey water filter when we leave here for the ice and everything else. But I'm telling you, some stuff I don't even want to attach it to my to my butt. I don't want whatever making the water smell like, you know, old jogging pants. I don't want that in my tanks because I don't know if I can get rid of that. 
did you buy new or used? I bought used every time. I've never bought a, a brand spanking new one. Um, I would like a C class for RV when the when it hits the fan. Let me tell you something about a, a C class. That's actually my favorite RV. But every single C class RV, whether it's new or old, that I've been in, worn it, inspected. That little piece that sits over here, that little uh bunk, sleepover bunk up there, every single last one of them leak. Every single one of them. If somebody in here tonight has a C-Class with that sleepover cabin over the driver that doesn't leak, I would love to hear your testimony. How smooth is the ride? Ooh, that's a question, boy. Butter. Butter. Didn't I tell you in the beginning of this video, the most dangerous thing, somebody said, what's the dangers, the most dangerous things on the highway? I said, you, because you get so comfortable. All of these chairs is plush. You riding on a plush seat, you kick back. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the comfort. My legs, you can stretch your legs out. They ain't cramped. They ain't all like lobster claws. Like you sitting there like a praying mantis for 800 miles. You know, you in your car like this. Like a praying mantis. You add your, hey, honey, give me some of them fries. Just like a praying mantis. <laughs> give me some of them fries. Cause you, <laughs> you ain't got to do that. You know, I got a plate of food sitting right there. I got a plate of food sitting right here. And I'm just reaching over. I'm just like I'm at the house, you know. I'm at the house. I ain't got a. Oh, they ain't all that. Oh, my God. All that cramper stuff. What's the sound barrier like? I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm, I'm at my house right now. And if you've been looking behind me, tons of cars and trucks been riding around over my mouth. You can't hear nothing out there. And if you out there, you can't hear me in here with all the windows and doors closed. You talk me into a drivable camper. Hey, that's that's just my own personal pro. Campers are great, but an RV ain't nothing like it. Ain't nothing like it, man. So uh, let me see. Remember, y'all, this is a long video. I'm not going to be done with this for a long time. So I'm going to get out right now. We're going to go. And we're going to start getting, showing y'all stuff. I'm not going to leave out my side door because we're going to end up leaving out here in a minute. And my, my stairs stick. I got to go oil them. All right. Let me see. Do you have solar on the roof? Nope. I don't believe in that. We don't hear noise inside. Now watch watch when I get out, out the RV. You're going to hear all the nature. Listen now. Listen. Watch this. Come on. I got a driver's side door too, which is awesome. Okay. It ain't too noisy out here. Things first. I got. I gotta go take it to get washed, cause when it was parked under the tree, you see all the all the um, algae over here. I gotta roll my slide out all the way back in because i didn't do that it started raining the other day i ran in the house like a little punk okay i'm gonna need my keys hold on we're gonna need our keys because we got some stuff to do all right we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about that pooper y'all down here's all the the storage for all my tools and stuff on this side. Now this is the El Pupo. I'm gonna show y'all everything. This the El Pupo right here. I bet you I don't got that key. I don't know why they lock the, the poop box. I don't know why that's locked. I don't understand why they put a key on that. Who wants to be in here? I do this every time. I do this every time. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna bring.
bring y'all down here. Now, I'm gonna show you straight up. I don't know, like somebody gonna steal steal my crap. Hey, have at it. This is the Rhino right here. I'm gonna show you what's so awesome about this. Because it got its own shutoff valve where I let flush everything out. This is my black water. Uh, this is my black water side, and this is my dirty like sink water. But this is where you hook the hose on, and you can hook your hose on and flush the water back out and clean your tanks out. I'm gonna leave that open. We can go back to that. Okay. Here. Here, you can't see in there, but here is where my tanks are. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take you around the side. This is where I keep all my extra hoses, my dirty hose, you need a dirty hose, you need a clean hose. I got an inline water filter, extra cord. This is just all the stuff I use, hooking up my water and my poop connections and stuff. Now here's, here's the action right here. This is the action. Okay, got the big boy here, all right? This the big owning generator right here. Now, the thing I like about this is because you can operate it from outside or you can start it from the inside of the bus. But it's about that time too. It's time for an oil change. Even though I don't run it much. It's just older, that's all. So, what we're gonna do, here's my trailer. You see the trailer hooked up, ready to go. Now, everybody asked, where do you put the water in at? This is where you put the water in at. On, on mine anyway. I want to get that oily. I always do this, man. I do this every time. Okay. All you do, you literally put your holes down there and fill up your tank. Now I'm going to I'm going to show you where the tank is. I don't, I, look at this. I locked the doggone thing. There we go. All right. So, I don't know if y'all still there, but here's my clean water tank. This is the clean water. The black water is on the other side, if y'all can see that. But... Never go nowhere without duct tape. You just never know. Now, here is my hot water heater. And the rest is storage. So, hang tight. Roll with me for a second because we're about to we about to go get that poop bucket. Because that's an important part of what we're talking about. Before we leave. All right. I should have been gone. Um, you, I'm going to do this. You can see all my... I got two AC units on the top. Up there. And I hit a branch. I hit a fallen branch and I gotta replace that cover up there. Hold tight. I know you wanna leave me, but I refuse to let you go. Hold 
Hold on. There it is. I'm glad I got it. Oh! Oh, leave me alone. Uh, I don't owe you money. Uh, 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 leave me alone. Tell my mom. <laughs> Hold on. I know you're like, what the hell was that? That's how we get down here in the greenhouse lounge. That's how we get down. So, yeah, I know people are like, oh my God, leg getting beat up. This is your portable pooper. This is your rhino pooper. So you hook that tube you hook that tube in here. You hook that in there. And now this, I think I got the, uh, this the 20, 28 gallon. I, said, I think it was like the 50, this ain't the 50. I went for the 28, which was stupid. So 28 gallon. Thank you, divine order. I just looked up and saw that. Thank you for that. You hook your tube in there when you don't got nowhere to hook your, your pooper to. And you got a water rinse out. You got everything on this. That's why it's worth it. And then you don't got to go picking it up because it got one on the side too to let it out. Literally to let it out. The best part is all this hangs on your ladder on the back of your RV. Then you got the hook. If you got a golf cart or something on your camp, you just hook this right into your... You just hook this right into your, uh, you hook this onto your doggone golf cart and you can pull this around like that. Oh, you can't see that. So that way you can just pull this stuff around. You always go to RV parks and see CDs rolling around behind people's stuff. You don't want to touch that. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you don't want to touch that. So that's what that looks like. So now we're going to close this up. Trust me, this is a piece of gold right here, what I just showed you. I know I'm just joking around, but man... You need, that's a, that's a, that's a necessity. So I'm going to close everything back up. Um, there's a couple things I need. I need to do. I need to put air in my tire. I need to air, air my tires up. I need to go through the car wash. I need to, uh, go check my, and top off my propane. That's major. And now that the freezing, I think we just hit the last freeze. I can fill my water tanks back up and start getting that water circulating because I do not want to go anywhere without no water. I 
I'm 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 looking at questions while I do this. Sounds like a movie. <laughs> Propane is three thirty six a gallon. And you know what's sweet? I got a. I think it's a a thirty gallon a thirty gallon tank under here. Yeah, I think it's more than that. There, are you still going to layers on the loose? Not if now with gas prices like this. I didn't know the world was gonna go to war. I would love to go on the loose. I really would. But I can't be traveling the country when gas is over five dollars a gallon. Do you do you add anything to the water tank? No. I, I use a here, look, just for that question real quick. I use a inline water filter. Lead, let me see, what was that? Will we see you in Nashville, Tennessee? If I can get enough money, I'll be doing the layers on the loose. But yeah. Use a Berkey and inline water filters. See that? Still hooked up. I use my own filters. I don't trust nobody's water filtration. And I got I got all kind of water purifiers and uh, survival purif uh, water purification systems inside the bus. You didn't show us the plug to plug in shore power. Oh, th thank you for that. Thank you. Let me close up my generator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just as simple as everything else I showed you. Let me close the po El Poopo. The poop hole. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the people, I still don't understand why they, they want a lock on this. What you gonna steal? What you gonna steal out of there? The, the gold mine. What you gonna steal out of here? If they wanna help me empty that out, fine. They don't got no knob for that. But here, here is where I play. Now, I've done something sweet. Let me show you something. I'm gonna show you what I did, sweet. This is where I'm gonna pour this all out because this is this is gonna be a trip. Is y'all ready for this? Okay, I'm gonna bring you all the way in too. Okay, what I did, family, let me down on bending knee. What I did was I put an extra cord in here because here's something that they don't tell you when you don't know too much about your RV is your your holes and your electrical may not be on this side where all mine is that's driving me crazy your electrical and stuff may not be on this side it may be over there so you gotta buy extra holes extra electrical plug extra wire to go under your bus right so you can get some power because your power box might be on the other side for land power land lines land water this is what i did I took this extra, this wire, I bought this, I think it's 30 feet. And I ran it. You see it's plugged in right now. It's coming out the other side of the RV. So normally, so that way, when I got the plug on the other side and there were all the connections on the other side, I used my tank water and I just use this plug that's coming out the other side over there. So when I want to use the generator, we're about to use the generator right now. Can you see this plug way in here, right here? Okay, here's the deal. And I know I'm buffering, understand this, okay? This plug is where you want to plug your, R your RV power into. Because this is your, I don't know if all RVs got this. Some of them do it automatically. Mine don't. You literally have to plug this into your generator. This is my generator power. So I'm going to take my extension loose. This is my RV power plug. This is the, all the power in my RV. And I'm going to plug that in to the generator. Let me try to make it so y'all can see it. And now, when my generator is running, everything on my bus works.
and I'll straighten that up later. You messed up my whole thing, didn't you? We'll, we'll deal with that later. And that's it. So now when I cut my generator on, I'm not running the power from my house no more. I done unplugged that. Now everything is gonna depend on that generator right there. When I had it hooked to the extension, I got that plug coming in the bus hooked to the solar power generators. Solar power generator from inside the bus. So I don't have to leave it outside. And it's whisper quiet. So let's go. See, this is the crazy part right here. Y'all get to hang out right here for me. I know this is crazy, but I told y'all we're gonna be in here for a while. This ain't this ain't gonna be no Eskimo show, right? Not today. Hold on. Y'all about to see some super crazy. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay, family. So that's it. Any questions? Any questions? Because we ain't done. This is going to be a super long video, I promise you. I'm taking you on my day, getting my RV ready. Where is the best place to buy an RV? I don't know. You have to do your research and just look around. There is no best place. It's like, where's the best place to buy a car? There is not. You got to do your research. Uh, what year is your RV? Ooh. I gotta always ask her this. I think it's a, I think it's a 07. It's Itasca. I think it's a 07. Don't quote me right now, cause I I just been juggling a whole bunch of uh, doggone titles. Do you have your roof window closed? My roof window. You mean my vent? No, I don't close my vent. I leave that open for the most time. I'm going to tell you something right now. Most of the people, they think that you need to have them closed. You need to keep those open or you're going to start getting mold in your, in your cabin. No, you leave your vents open. Did I lock my poop door? Yeah. They made it so you can't even just close it. You got to lock it. A RV is definitely a good investment. Amen to that. Tour of the inside. Now, it's some stuff I can't show you, okay? I can't show you my bedroom because that's private. It's like in my house. Some stuff is off limits. But uh, for the most part, the bathroom and stuff, I'll show you that. Um, Let me see. Where are we going on a field trip? I need to go get some air in a tire. And I need to go... Um, let's see, some air. And I need to... Go check my propane. So let's do this. I'm I'm going to actually get another setup so you guys can actually see me a little more. You ain't got to just be looking at me do this. So give me two things. What's the difference between a camper and an RV? A camper is something you pull behind your already vehicle. And an RV is like what I'm in right now. I can drive it. And that's all I need is this. So two ticks. I mean it too. I just need to grab something. I'm taking the whole greenhouse lounge with me. The whole greenhouse lounge about to go with me, honey. I'll be back. Ugh. All right. I had to get my other, this little suction cup thing. So you will have a better kind of angle at what I'm trying to accomplish here, which is kind of crazy. Give me a second. I ain't never had this one in here. Please don't fall and break my dog on fire. All right. That should do it. 
That is crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. All right. We ready? Y'all literally have a real point of view. Is there a maximum passenger load? I'm sure it is. It don't matter what mine is. Whatever one you find, you got to find your maximum passenger. Uh, why did you choose not to do solar on the RV? Is it problematic? No, because I'm not drilling holes in, in my roof. When you're in an RV, your roof is vulnerable. You want as least amount of holes in your roof as you possibly can do. When it comes to solar, and we're going to do that today too. All you got to do is run a, a wire out there. My panels are out there. My generator is back here on the kitchen table. And I can solar all that fancy stuff. You're going to pay an extra $10,000, to $20,000 for all that nonsense. It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. How many can you sleep in an RV? However many you can sleep in whatever one you find. How do you open the vent and how much do you open it up? It depends on how, how much air I want. I don't know if them is real questions, family. We, that's like, remember, let me start this over again. We're in a house with wheels on it. It's no different than inside your house. You start feeling muggy in your house, you crack a window. It get hot, you open the window all the way up. We, I just need everybody to have a little common sense right here. We ain't in no spaceship. This is just, just a, it's like a house with wheels on it. That's it. That's all. I just want to make sure everybody know that because some of the questions is like, so what does the green button do? This ain't, this ain't that kind of thing. So let's just go. Do my key. How many people can sleep in your RV? As many as I want. Let's hear that. Do you have plastic or porcelain toilet? What difference does that make? Uh, that's, that's like what kind of tissue do you use? Are you a folder or are you a crumbler? Come on, y'all, with the questions. For real, man. What? what come on. I think that was supposed to be sarcastic, I think. Because that's, that's, them the kind of questions I'm getting right now. That ain't, them, them, these questions ain't got nothing to do with what you need to know about having an RV or should you purchase one or not or had to fix my, my sack. So I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to catch that on camera. But I need us to be realistic, okay? Come on. Like, what kind of tissue do you, should I use in my RV? Cottonelle or Scott? All them kind of questions. I'm, I'm going to just keep bypassing them. I'm trying not to be rude. Is your uh, RV diesel or gas? It's gas. And which one do you prefer? Gas. What is the mile, and hour, mile per hour for Class A? I don't even understand that question. I like the questions, but I just need people to think about what they about to ask me before they ask me because... You got almost 800 people in here thinking that something is wrong with you with some of these questions. I don't want people to think that. What size engine and fuel type is under the hood? Um, that's it's a gas engine. See that this th those aren't questions. Those are personal questions. You asking me what's in mine? What's in mind? How do I feel about the tear, teardrop camper? Uh, if you want a teardrop camper and you want to go like sleeping in somebody's trunk, you must you must be from the south. Like I'm I'm going to think that you've never lived in the north, asking about a teardrop camper, because. Us northerners get a little claustrophobic with little spaces like that. You ever been in somebody's trunk um, involuntarily? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it, it, that stereotype of, you know, somebody putting you in, in a trunk because you might not, when the door open from the trunk, you might not make it. Like you might be going to see... Jesus, 
I wouldn't buy a teardrop camper. It's just, that's just not enough space to, for me to do anything. I would rather have a tent than spend $25,000 on a teardrop camper. I'd rather spend $25 on a four-man Coleman tent than $25,000 on a teardrop camper. Are you worried about getting parts? That's like, am I worried about getting roof shingles for my house? How do you open the vent? What? I don't understand that vent question. As a matter of fact, that vent, that vent question. Oh, I don't, I don't understand that vent question. Let's leave that vent question alone because you keep saying it and I don't quite understand it. It's starting to kind of freak me out a little bit. What's the... That's what I meant, Lee. Thanks. I wish I wish I could have seen it, cause I do passengers in the back area wear seat belts if they feel like it. It's not required. It's not the law. Your RV is called a Class A. There's a different classes A and D and B and C. Hazard. I don't understand what that. Wait, wait. That was a question. What is your gas mileage for your RV? Come on, y'all, because I know I know what my RV do. I'm asking, trying to answer questions to see if you want. I got a lot of people asking me a lot of questions so because they're trying to purchase one and they want to know the first things to look for. Y'all asking me personal questions like, when you in your RV, do you wear shorts or pants? Do you wear socks and drawers when you, you know what I'm saying? Those are personal questions. That's not, whatever I do inside my RV is not going to help you. How smooth is the ride compared to other vehicles? We about to find out right now. Right now we about to find out. Matter of fact, yeah. Y'all ready? That's enough of that nonsense. What do you think about the Airstream? Nothing. What do you think about the Airstream? What I like ain't... Ain't got nothing to do with what you like. I promise you. All right. While I was going around, just in case y'all don't know, while I was going around the bus, y'all ready? We gonna black out a few times, okay? No, the insurance is no higher than your average vehicle, your average SUV. Um, We gonna black out a few times, but we gotta get this thing going. I did a pre-trip around the whole vehicle early this morning on my engine and I did a pre-trip around while we was doing this and I know I need tire, air on that tire over there. How does getting a flat work? Can, same way on your car. Let's go. How does a flat work? When you get a flat, you need help. Here we go. We are moving. We are moving. I wish Lady Lear was coming with me. Ooh. Can y'all see that? I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Hold on. So we are moving. We are moving. So we're going we to uh, buffer a few times, okay? Taking y'all with me. Okay? So I think... Up, uh, I just heard something. I told you sometimes stuff ain't, ain't batting down. I forgot to lock my side door, but it'll be all right. And tonight, I will play some music, but you know, we'll get copyrighted for that. So we doing it, y'all. Let's go. I'm gonna stop here for a hot second. I'm gonna show y'all something. Remember I told y'all that, um, Remember I told you my side wasn't out? Y'all, I must be buffering. Hold on. Because I got to go fix something. If I'm buffering, y'all might see this later. I have to settle something because my slide out is slid out. I forgot to pull it back in before I left. So hold on. Now what you see is the camera. The camera is bouncing all around. But I'm smooth as a button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off, off to a, a second here, okay? 
because I gotta let my oh my jar that's what that was I hope it don't break I forgot all about it. I can't even look back this is like trying to look back while you're doing some roofing jobs on your house just just let it go <laughs> just let it go man okay it's a wrap so I'm, I'm gonna pull this down in a second I will show y'all the beauty. Ugh, if y'all can see it, y'all can't see that beauty. All right, I'ma pull over right here. Cause I wanna show you something. All right, so before we go any further, I wanna show you that you can see my slide out. Let me. You see my slide out, out right there? Okay, so I gotta pull that in. That little piece right here, it slid out about three inches. So I don't wanna be going down the street looking like I just stole this thing. So I literally have to put, put on my, I'm gonna show y'all this. Put on my park brake and cut on my power jacks and now I gotta let these touch the ground. No, 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 no. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I'm tripping, y'all. These are my power jacks. This is my bag. I'm hitting switches. All right. Front jacks. Those... Those jacks have to be down before I can move my slide in. Now I'm gonna show you something, okay? So now, all I do is push this. If I wanted it to go out, I will hit that and it's gonna go out. I'm gonna show you all that later, but I'm gonna bring it back in. So I, all I gotta do is push this button. I'm gonna show you right now. I'm gonna show you what happens when I push that button. You see it's out three inches, right? You see it? Gone, sweet. I ain't got no cars behind me, so watch this, watch this. No, I ain't gonna do it now, because that's, that's a treat for later. That's a treat for later. Now we good. Okay, any questions so far before we leave? Now I gotta let my jacks up. So, I'm going to hit these switches again, and all I got to do to release them is, can y'all see that? Yeah, is hit that, and hit this one. Now, I have a warning on my dash just letting me know that my jacks are down so I can't move until that light goes out. What you're supposed to do is, thank you, pick up my jar. Man, you, you are on it. You're supposed to get out and really check and see if your jacks are up or down. You're supposed to. But yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for telling me that, Lisa. If I could find it. I don't know where it went. Can y'all see this? Y'all can see this. Where my jar at? I guess I can lock my door too. So we fixed a few things. All right, y'all ready? Okay. Okay, normally see, Lady Led in here with me will OnStar cover RVs. I don't know, that's a question you gotta ask them. All right, we about to go again. Kids, I hope y'all peed and everything. Y'all got some food? Now, I'm gonna show y'all something else that I love. Okay, you with me? Everybody with me? 
All right, I'm going to show you there is no air conditioning, okay? This is your air conditioning, just like in your car. This don't work. And I'm not going to go recharge it because this little bit of air conditioning ain't going to do nothing for this big giant house. So what we got to do is we got to cut on our generator. I ain't had it in a while, so now listen close. Listen, listen to it. Wait, I'm going to cut, cut off my engine so we can hear it good. Listen close. Listen. Sound like some dolphins up on here. Hear it? There she is. Ooh, she sound good. You hear that? I heard everything just hook up. Everything is cutting on. I heard my refrigerator cut on. I heard the generator just cut on. Mmm, she said she purring like a kitten. Look, kitty cat. Okay. Uh, now, now, oh, I guess I got to get back up. Now that I got my generator running, let's go cut the air on. <clears throat> So now that I got the generator running, I can cut my air on here. Yeah, it's old school, but boy, do this mug work. Y'all hear that? Ooh. Take that thing down. Let that thing run. No, I better leave it alone. Let me leave it. Let me leave it where it was. That'll work. So it's on high. It's on cool. And I can feel it already coming out the vents all right back to the captain's seat all right y'all ready so now I got AC for the whole cabin I'm only using the front AC we got an AC just for the bedroom as well. But it, I don't need that. That's a waste of power. And our generator, the generator runs off of the fuel tank for the RV. So you got to remember this, okay? If you have a separate gas tank for your generator, you want to know that. Ours is integrated, which is awesome. Because when I'm looking at my fuel gauge, this is the fuel gauge for my RV and my generator. So I'll always know that I'm not about to run out of fuel on a separate gas tank for the generator or it's drinking too much for my RV. I'll know everything with just my normal gas gauge. So let's go. Y'all ready? Oh yeah, my park brake. Make sure everything is up. Let's go. If y'all got any, oh, look, you see that? I'm trying to take off and I'm trying to put it in gear. Like, what's wrong with it? That's my air running, not my engine. I do this every time. Let's go. All right, you guys. What time is it? What time is it? I can't see what time. Damn. It might be too late. But you know what? That's okay. We just gonna go, if, if it's too late to go to this one, we just gonna go far away. We just gonna have to. It's 345, we can make it. So it's just like driving a car. It's no different. You ever see the bus man eat like this? Bus, the bus man is cool. This is all to a family. So we might start buffering, but Bear with me, okay? Again, we in the bug out bus, lead's on the loose. Somebody asked me again, lead, when are you going on the loose? Listen, I would love to do it. Gas is up. Let me see, I'm about to tell you how much gas is. It was $4.99 yesterday. I'm gonna tell you in a minute. 
I can't see I can't see the gas station from here. But while I'm at this light, I can I can answer some questions. Let me see. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not four ninety nine. I'm sorry. Three ninety nine. I'm sorry. I'll, I'm thinking four dollars is three ninety nine. It was three ninety nine yesterday. I'm sorry. But either way, do three ninety nine times a hundred. Come on, let's go. Yeah, road rage in the RV, right? That's real crazy. You got to take wider turns because you are in a house. You are in a house with wheels on it. So I'm going to I'm going to show y'all a little POV if I can reach it. I don't know if that's going to work. No, that ain't showing y'all nothing. We'll leave that alone for now. All right. Woo! We bought, we bought the, uh, let me think. Let me think. I got to think. Okay. We about to do some real crazy stuff right now. I hate going down this road, but we got to do it. All right. Y'all ready? Oh, we we definitely blacking out right now. This is the tight pinch. Oh, this is the pucker hole here, buddy. This is a tight turn. It's no different than driving a car. The only thing different that you have to do is you got to be aware of what's over top of you right now. You do have to look for low hanging branches. I just heard something come out. You do have to look for low hanging branches. You do. Because I think uh, that a uh, nine, no, 13 foot height. I gotta remember what that was. But you gotta remember this stuff. You gotta remember the bushes and stuff on side of you that I just hit. So all of this is stuff that you, I am literally taking you on a real life deal. That's why I said this video is going to be long. So you got time to go and come back, but I'm sure you ain't gonna wanna come back to a whole three or four hour video. So, and trust me, we going, no, we doing it today. All of us, we own it today. So we got, we rolling down, I'm not on the highway, I should have got on the highway for y'all. We'll do that on the way back. So uh, we coming up to a light in a second. And I'm going to uh, answer a few questions if I can. If the light is red, it's always red. So this is part of it. Everybody keep wondering, like, is it hard to drive an RV? No. Is it hard to drive a mail truck? No. It's like literally driving your car. It's so much like driving your car that you you have to remember you're not in your car. You got 34 feet, 32 feet behind you. You got to remember that. You know, you you it's that smooth where you literally have to keep reminding yourself that you are in a bus. Okay, we had a red light. How fast are you going? I was just going like 40 mile an hour, 35. It just seemed like it's fast because we sitting up high in the air. Uh, so yeah, so this is it y'all. This is how we get down all the time. Uh, do you have air brakes? No, I don't have air brakes. I, I, I wanted air brakes, but that's one thing. I, these brakes is, is great, so I ain't got no complaints. 
you're in my neck of the woods. I don't know. Any blind spots like a truck. This whole bus is blind spots. I got a house behind me. Yes. But all these windows, I, you see I leave my windows open. I pull my blinds up. Because believe it or not, sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need your blinds up. So don't be trying to be private and drive. Um, plus, I like when people look up and look at me like this. I think I cut that air on too high. I'm freezing. Like you driving the U-Haul. You know what? There's no comparison. This is just all just comfort and soft and cushiony seats. It's not like driving a U-Haul, not at all. It's literally like you sitting on your, look, I'm sitting in my easy chair. This, my legs are stretched out. I'm sitting in my easy chair driving, but this big screen is like a TV. So I'm looking at everything. I'm not crunched up, nothing. So here we go. All right, I'm really going to take y'all on a crazy adventure. And I got my, uh, ooh, did I? I need to make sure I lock my bike rack. Uh, let me see. I like the size. You know, I'm gonna tell you this, when you get an RV, when you get an RV, don't go too small. It's like a motorcycle. If you get a small one, like if you're really getting into really riding, not many bikes, you're going to want something with more power and you're going to spend just as much money. Look at this fool. Look at this fool. Walking down this two-way lane. Man, people crazy, man. They're going low, low branch. Whoa! Whoa! Y'all see that? No, you didn't. I just dipped off of a low branch and I seen people been hitting it. I dipped off of a low branch and cars was on the other lane so I kind of went over in that lane so they'd know that I'm coming over there. Oh man, that, that branch would have came in here and made dinner. Okay. All right, y'all. We coming up to it. We coming up to our first stop. So I'm going to take y'all in here with me. This is going to be crazy. I might have to put my camera away or whatever. Uh, no, I ain't putting my camera away. So, uh, I'm just showing you guys the reality of how this works. Everything about it. So, you'll literally have somebody that you know, which is me. Ha <laughs> ha! Beautiful RV pulling a trailer. Somebody that you know is literally, literally, truly doing it, living it, that can give you real experience from my point of view. How is you riding that close on me? Even ride close on an RV. All right, we here. All right, he said, come in, God, please. Come in and make a left. All right, we here. This is gonna be sticky, man. This this driveway is whack. This is whack. Come on, fool. Come on now. You see me coming in the house, you're gonna try to get out of here. I'm gonna make a whole bunch of sense worth of damn. People dumb, man. Whole house coming down the highway. And you wanna, I think I can squeeze through. Then they wake up in heaven wondering why they did. All right. I'm, I'm gonna show y'all where we at. I'm gonna show y'all uh, if this. I'm holding the phone, so. Because it wouldn't focus in that windshield. Here come another one. Move, sucker. Get out the way. All right, they told me to come in here. Look at all these beautiful crafts. Where you going, dude? Think I can squeeze by this uh, this house on wheels? He told me to come out here, 
park. Look at that. Did somebody wanted a nice little trailer. Reserved for service and delivery. Okay, okay. I don't know if the dude told me right. I don't know if he gave me the right directions. Reserved for service and delivery. I'm, I'm going to... I might. That's the other thing about an RV. I'm glad I'm thinking about it now. You better make sure you can drive. Because once you go in a, a you thread that needle, you better be able to get it out. If you can't drive, you need to let somebody else do it. Uh, I'm kind of lost because the guy told me to come in here where the... Um, I'm going to just stop here and go back into the store. Y'all with me? Ha! There go the propane right there, boy! Okay, we might be able to do it. I found it. Let me let me pull up. I'm going to make it easy for them. This is the propane. So, we doing pretty good. We doing pretty good. I thought I was in the wrong place, but he said the propane tank is right next to the garage. So, come in and ask somebody. All right. So... I'm, a, I'm going to turn my generator engine off. Listen to that air. It's so crispy. I'm going to turn my generator off. Listen. You hear it cutting off everything, all that beeping. I did that. And I know a lot of people in RVs do this, but don't do this, please, for, for everybody else's safety. When you pull into a gas station or anywhere that's near fuel, cut all your engines off. I always do. It's just out of courtesy. You know, I don't know if stuff, you don't know how people done kept their stuff. So let's, let's go. Y'all with me. I'm talking, I'm talking like y'all my kids. Like that's my son. I tell my son, come on, you with me. All right. Ugh. Captain's log. Captain's log. Supplemental. Yeah, I'm locking it. When you go to an RV place to buy RVs, lock your RV. Or you might come back to your RV with a bunch of people inside admiring your RV. All right. My baby need a bath. How we doing, man? Who do I talk to for um for uh, propane? They told me to come in here and pull back here. I would talk to somebody in that office right there. All right. Those right yeah, there. man. Thank you, bro. Oh, right here? Yeah. Okay. So, let me see. What, what folk will come in, in your RV? Because they think it's for sale. They might think it's for sale. So hold tight, hold tight. I gotta, I gotta sound professional. <clears throat> Hello. Hey. hey, how we doing, my friend? Uh, yeah. I, I called a little earlier and they told me to fill my propane tanks. I just need to pull back here and the propane tank is over to this side somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I'm somebody, on. Is somebody from retail coming out to help you? No, I called and he told me just to pull back here. I don't didn't know who to come and talk to. Whether it was you or you want me to go to the office. Yeah, the, the retail folks okay. will fill your tanks for you. All right, thanks, bro. Yes, sir. All right, I guess we got to go all the way out. Ooh. Hey, come on. Watch this. Wait, wait, wait. Ooh, I'm with y'all. Is y'all with me? Oh, my God, this is so dope. Look at this. That smell like somebody been in here cooking. Oh, this this belonged to somebody. Let me get the hell out of somebody RV. See, I told you. Didn't I tell you? That's why you lock your RV. <laughs> That's why you lock your RV. I'm all in here exploring and stuff. That's somebody's stuff. I'm like, damn, it smell like hamburgers and french fries up in this mug. That's why. Watch this. Oh, 
it smelled like hamburgers and fries. And I'm sitting here wondering, like, damn, is this a promotional or something? No, fool, this is somebody's stuff. I looked over in the corner and seen some pants. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I'm about to go all in somebody's stuff. Didn't I just get through telling y'all? This is why you lock your RV. My bad. All right. All right, here we go. Hey, how we doing? Okay. I, I, I called a little earlier about propane fill up. And, all right, my man. I'm already pulled around the side right in front of the tank. I'll do some propane. No, okay, I'm here for 30 minutes. Oh, he the man. He like a good way to waste 30 good minutes so I can go to the house. That's right, man. Take as long as you need. All right. Y'all don't put air in tires, do you? Air is, air is right back there. Yep, the uh, Itasca. I'll just say the irony of it all. I know, and I just got through talking about it, right? That J. Cole is the one I jumped in. No, that sunset. That sunset right there, the second one, is the one I jumped in. So, <clears throat> everyday life of lead. When I say lead lives, lead lives, I mean it. Live life to the fullest. Look at my big baby. See, look, you know how much that one costs? That's $350,000. Yeah. Would I finance one? Hell no. Absolutely not. Uh, okay. Let me open up my propane. I might not, I might not have to might not need too much. Alright, so here's the hose. Uh -huh. I'm gonna get the forklift, push this thing back, and I need you to pull closer to here. Okay, oh. sweet, sweet. Okay, okay. So, alright, I gotta get a little closer. Get a little closer. Don't be shy. Get a little closer. Hamburger and fries. All right. Hold on, y'all. This man is using a forklift, man. This is so dope. I want to see this for myself. This man using a forklift. To pick this up and move it. Beast mode like a mug. <laughs> Woo! Look at that. Now that's crazy. I ain't going to show his face. I'm going to show that. He moving that. Man, that's insane. That's dope. I love coming here. All right. Now I... I got to... Like I told you, if you can't drive this sucker, stay out of it. Yeah, that's a fifth wheel he, he pulling back. He got a special attachment on that forklift too. Man, that was so dope. I've never seen that done before. Okay. I'm going I'm to pull up. I'm going to pull up and then pull back. When I tell you I can drive this sucker. I can drive my baby. I drove trucks for years. And it's nothing like driving a truck. Y'all thought I was going to say, so I know what I'm doing. No, it's nothing like driving a truck. Nothing that tired. It's like driving a bus. Or a long U-Haul.
okay, now he got me. Y'all with me? Sweet. All right. Good. Park brake. Don't let me forget to put my park brake back on. All right. We going at it. Come on, y'all. I always roll my window down when I leave my keys in. My dumb butter locked my keys in the car. In. Shut off, Brian. Yes, everything is off. Generator, everything. I'm just I'm showing my friends how how this how this work because they're thinking about getting. So you just hook that into there like that. I ain't gonna show your face, brother. I don't. No, I don't. Care. <laughs> I'm not hiding. <laughs> okay, because some people are like don't put me on camera, man. I won't do nobody like that. There's a little bleeder hose. Yeah. We'll open that up. All right. That's the stuff. the gauge with my finger like that yeah working right yeah because i know some of the older ones yeah it's moving slowly but surely Yeah, I just seen it. I seen it jump hard right there. All right. Full of the tick. Sweet. Leave the line. Yep. You guys don't air up tires here, do you? Oh, no, sir. Okay. I was trying to get to do it. Somebody do all the work for me. I got the cap in my pocket. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't know what happened. No, I, I took it off first. I always take it off because the uh, the little flap is broke. And I keep threatening to put it on. Yep, that's the stuff. Sweet man, you just made my wife so happy. I'm tired of her telling me to go and go feel the propane. Just it just flips. Yep. Right. That's it. Right. Old school. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Oh. 9.6 gallons. Okay, 9.6. Yes, All right. Oh, we go, the go back to where I came from. Right, the cashier right there. All right. I tell them I tell them you're still out here working on my RV, so you <laughs> Right so you can wait wait that 30 minutes out. <laughs> Have a good day, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, All right. So, simple. You just got to stay on top of your... Ooh, look. Look. See, I told you, there's some cover in that one. There's some cover and some clothes in this one. Don't be walking it around here. I didn't... I didn't lock my RV. Just let's, let me hurry up and get this over with. I didn't lock my RV at all. Did you say RV says leaves RV would be a hundred dollars a gallon? No, it ain't no hundred dollars a gallon.
Hey, how you doing? Good, All right. Hey, how we doing? 9.9, .9, or you can put it up here. 9.9? That's the stuff. You have a good sound membership with us? No. Yes. Would you like to sign up for a good sound membership? No. Where do I put this in? Oh, Lord. I would want one. Come around the desk. I'm trying to get that. No, you. Yeah. 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 You can get the green circle at the bottom. I'll give you one of our brochures. It's how you save on um, merchandise you buy in the store, discounts if you get anything done in the service department, mm -hmm. discounts at the 2400 campgrounds we partner with, five cent on gas, eight cent diesel at Pilot Flying Jack. Okay. I'm going to leave this here because okay. I don't want to waste it. I don't want to fly out and be pollution. <laughs> Thank All right, you, take your card. But, but thank you, though. Here. You're welcome. Take right. your card. I, I don't want it. I'm giving oh, it to you. Okay. Y'all <laughs> have a good day here. What did I do? What did I do? What? All right, you gotta be kidding me. Can y'all see me? I'm sitting here. I got every, there we go. I said I can't take y'all in my bedroom, but I have to. I hope this works. <clears throat> I can't find my extra. <clears throat> Get a little closer. My phone is dying. Out of all the stuff I'm doing, I freaking bring my charger. I don't know where all my chargers at. I took them in the house. Hold on. I'm going to ask y'all, can y'all see me? In a second. Can y'all see me? See and hear me. Perfect. Now let me get some juice up in this mofo. All right, yes and yes. Ah, we back. Huh, like we always do about this time. Now let me get some power. Yeah, that's what's up. Woo! All right. Y'all ready? Can y'all see me? Give me a thumbs up if you can see me. Now I got to figure out how to get the hell out of here. If you can see me, say see and hear, or just hear. We see you. All right, that's all I'm worried about. All right, let's cut a generator first. Let's start the generator back up. I need the air. Chill, chill. Now let's get this big bus going. Come on, baby. Parking brake. Let's get out of here. Captain's log supplemental. We've just stopped at the dock and reloaded our precious fuel of antimonium. All right. I'm going to keep you all right here for a second until I get. No, we're going back up top. Let's go. So now I'm going to stop and get some gas. I'm down a quarter. I'm down. A, I'm going to show you all before we get out. Said we never lost video, saw it all. Oh, good, that's wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to top it up so you get an idea how much it's going to cost me. Okay, let's go. 
As soon as I figure out how to get the hell out of here. All right. You didn't say. I'm going to look around this corner and see if I can uh, figure out another way to get out of here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn y'all this way so y'all can see what I see. And y'all can see what I'm going to have to do. Damn. All right. Uh, all right. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn. I wish y'all could see everything that I see. I don't know how I'm going to turn up. Man, I got to do some serious maneuver maneuverability. And these is brand new RVs. All right. I know what I'm going to do. You see this? This spot right here? I'm going to have to back into this spot so I can turn around because I don't see another way I'm going to be able to turn around. And I don't want to keep going into this uh, 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 abyss. So, it got to be another way. I Listen, backing up and turning sound good, but I'm backing up in the middle of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of things that don't belong to me. So, yeah, that sounds all good. Let me, let me, let me check plan B. Because even though I can drive, I don't have $100,000. <clears> so without a spotter, I'm going to say no to that. Okay. Okay, I got, I got one. I got one. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to pull down this alley. Damn, they made this terrible. How do you think you're supposed to get in here? All right, hold tight, y'all. This is stupid. Man, I, I hate coming on to people's old gravelly lots. Okay, we good. Okay. I'm just gonna whip around this corner. I'm gonna whip around this corner, it's tight. Come on, baby. They should have told me. I wish there'd be another way to get out of this uh, mausoleum. It's like never ending RVs. All right. To watch the tongue on these other ones because you can't see that tongue they poke out the thing you hook you're supposed to hook to your trailer hitch you can't see those tongues I know this is crazy, y'all. Bear with me. I told y'all this is going to be one hell of a ride. I ain't lying, am I? Even I'm thinking it's one hell of a ride. We in the clear. We in the clear, but we ain't, we ain't done threading that needle. Okay? Now here's a fifth wheel I got to watch out for. Because this booty just sticking all out in the open. I don't know if y'all can see that. But we doing all right. We doing all right, family. We good. We good. We good. Yay! All right. Safety first. Now let's get out of here. Scotty, Captain Spock. Let's go warp three. All right, let's go. So, I'm going to show y'all on the way out. Here we go. On the way out. 
I just filled up with 10 gallons of propane and it costed me $58. Somebody asked, when I thought y'all couldn't see me, how long does the propane last? This is my first real fill up. Cause the last goofball that filled my tank up, he didn't know what he was doing. And I had, I trusted him. So that needle never moved. I've never seen that needle move ever. It's been like that since I bought it and we've been using it all year. So there you go family. So this is how you do it. If you're looking for one, this is, you come out to a store like this, remember, wide swing, wide swing. Stick to the wall, stick to the outside wall. See that? Your RV got about a good 10 foot booty hanging off the back, so you gotta compensate for that, just like a bus. There go our propane, bye propane! Hope I don't have to see you soon. I'm going to put y'all back up on the, on the meter in a second, okay? But this is how you go. You go out and you go to one of these stores and you just walk all up in one of them. Tell the salesperson you just want to just, just get a look and look all around. And just make a whole day of it. It's fun. Sometimes they'll be out here with the barbecue grill going, so they'll feed you. You know, you can get your drink going. Wide turn. All right, y'all. It's time to get it. Look at all. Look at that big, beautiful beans right there. That's what all these RVers be getting. I got a friend that got one of those. Hank Strange, my buddy Hank Strange in the 2A community, got him a Benz like that. Okay, family. So now, I think that's about it for that. I told you it's going to be a long video, and it's not over. We're going to get some fuel, and I think I'm going to take my baby to get a bath. So, eh, nah, that's doing way too much. I'll show y'all a video of her getting a bath. We're going to get the heck out of here, and I'm going to pull over. That's what, it's time for a treat. Uh, air in the tires. I'm going to have to do air in the tires tomorrow because that's part of me getting, uh, giving her a shower. So, here's the crazy part. Driving an RV in the city is crazy. They just ain't built to be on little side roads. I can answer some questions while I wait for this ambulance. Uh, let me see. I was looking at the campers like, "Ooh, I need that camper." I was gonna, I was gonna go inside a few of them so y'all could see them, but I didn't know I was walking into some dude's stuff. Oh, please let me out! Oh, it's about five thousand cars coming. All right, y'all. Part of being an RV, you are in a big monster truck, so you can muscle your way up out of here. All right, here we go. Traffic on the highway is, is jammed. It's an accident. So I'm taking side roads. I'm going to get air in my tire tomorrow. And, uh, and give her a bath tomorrow. So right now, I am going to top her off in fuel. And then I'm going to show you how this slide out works. So you get a first-hand view of why my wife wanted this so much and why you may want to look into getting one with a slide out. It makes a huge difference. I promise you I did not think I wanted one until she showed me one. Once she said, just listen to the man and look, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. I turned a, I turned a little bus into a living room. So here we go. All right, that's a tight turn. Um, great brakes. I mean, I wouldn't be trying to do no Fast and Furious stuff with it, but. All of my tanks are empty, so I'm riding. 
I don't have any water in my tanks, no clear water, and I cleaned all my black water and gray water tanks before. Oh, uh, here goes some branches, you hear? Let me get away from that. I don't have any dark water at all. Uh, <clears throat> lady led my baby in the house. Baby, we feel, we, I, I got your propane, baby. So leave me alone about it. She always, y'all, you gotta go get that propane. You said you was gonna get that propane. I got your propane, baby. Hey, I got your propane right here, huh? <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, baby, I gotta go the long way because the highway is closed. So, we heading over here. Y'all gonna go with me? Dang, I really wanted to just hurry it up, but it's not gonna be a, a fast job. I wanted to show y'all the highway. God, it's closed. I'm gonna answer some questions. We coming to a red light? I could probably go down a side street. Any questions, real quick? Said we nearly had the call. I know that's right. No Tokyo Drift, not today. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's go, y'all. We back on the road. But for 9.9, .9, I missed something. I would go down this road, but man, I know, I know it's it's a mess down there. And I'm not stopping over here. Have you ever? <laughs> you can't stop in in certain areas in this. Do hey, listen to this. Also, do you do you hear while we're riding? You don't hear a whole bunch of rattling and shaking going on. This mug is on point. Everything is tight. It's older, but everything is tight. We tested out a bunch of new ones and everything was shaking, wiggling, falling off. Stuff that ain't supposed to be shaking and wiggling and falling off. So we just rolling, we cruising. Oh, let me roll my window up. Shut that up quick, didn't I? So I'm gonna I'm keep on rolling here. And we're gonna pull up and say, have you ever filled up at Costco? No. Any restrictions on driving? I don't know, no. We about to pull over and I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask answer some more questions. I can't look at the screen, I'm passing a cemetery, kind of giving respect, and I don't want to end up over there. So we rolling. This is the best part. You just rolling down the road or the highway. Imagine my whole family in here behind me laughing and having a good time. And I'm right here with them. And we all on the same trip. You know, my mom is older. My mom is older, so she can't be riding no little bitty car for hours on end. She can come in here, stretch her legs out. Put We got uh, fold up ottomans, fold up tables everything you need like the comforts of home so my mother always want to ride she ready to go because it's comfortable you don't got to make no crazy accommodations because you sitting right here in a doggone couch i'm sitting i'm sitting in a lazy boy right now sick by hanging out in the you in the bus with me huh I wouldn't be surprised look I might be live right now rolling through my city and one of y'all actually drive by me while I'm live 
that would be a trip. That would be crazy. So, uh, oh, railroad tracks. I really want to get my, my baby washed. Because I got to get that algae off from that tree. Because it used to be parked under a tree. What was that question? Is this a new RV? No, not at all. We're talking about things to look for and things you may want in an RV. Things to look for, things you want to stay away from. I say one of the wonder, best things is as much storage as you can get, inside and outside. Okay, I'm at a light now. I hear you on that because my legs can't take a long trip. Hell, I'm fairly young and my legs can't take a long trip. The sound of an RV rolling sounds great, like great memories. It is. It is. And what y'all see here is just a chain from... I just thought of something new. There we go. I tell my wife about that. For my blinds. Now I feel like I'm in a, a semi truck. Uh oh, y'all. I see gas for 398. It's coming down. It's funny when people look at me. Little kids. Little kids be looking up in the window and you got to wave at them like some of them want you to blow the horn like wrong vehicle but I'll blow the horn anyway be like be like that truck sound funny <laughs> that truck don't sound good I'm about to, I'm about to pull over in a, in a second y'all so we can run this thing through the ringer and show y'all the little treat until they make me leave. I really want to. I really want to put some music on. Uh oh. Ah. Uh, I thought that there was a car wash. I was gonna put them to the test. If them little kids, them, them Girl Scout cookies was washing cars for cookies, I was going to be like, give me two boxes of Thin Mints and wash all of this. I was going to put them to work. All of y'all, get that little baby out the stroller too. Everybody, crawl all over this like Gulliver's Travels and clean. <laughs> clean my bus. Oh, my God. All the Lully Puddings. Get on this RV and start wiping it up. Well, sir, well, give me about four more boxes of them cookies. Get make sure, hey, hey, make sure you wax, wax it good. Hey, get them tires. These thin men ain't paying for themselves. Now, we're also going to talk about cheap security. Cheap security for your RV at night, where you park it, or whatever. I'm going to show you that as well, okay? So please remind me, because my brain is on the road right now. On the road again? Yes, can't wait to get on the road again. Damn, can't wait to get on the road again. All right. I don't know what people follow so close behind the bus. All right, so we're going to pull over. I'm going to find an empty spot. And we're going to pull off. And I'm going to show you something. If I can find a spot. If I can turn back time, I give it all to you. <laughs> I don't know where that one came from. I don't, I, I don't know where that one came from. Share? Goodness. 
That wasn't even uh, Sonny Bono share. That was share. Okay. We could we almost there, y'all. So hang tight, hang tight. I know so many people like this is crazy. I know, but we're going to end this video by me showing you a few things, answering a few last questions, and giving you exactly my last briefing of what this is. For all the people that are just coming in, just getting off work, I have done a long video. I think I've been on here since 2.30. And we've been answering questions and I am literally taking you on a journey for some of some of the things that I have to do to maintain my RV. I still got to fill up with fuel. I still need to put air in my tires. We just got our propane field. I still need to go Ooh, RV in front of me. Oh, that ain't no RV. That's an electrical power truck. Oh man, I got happy for nothing. And a FedEx truck. When you when you out in an RV and you see another RV, you try to follow that other RV. Like when you're on a motorcycle and you see another person on a motorcycle, you literally try to follow that motorcycle so you can kind of ride with them for as long as y'all paths connect. Ooh, this is tight as a turtle. Yeah, girl, better put them fries down. Come on, all this. this oh, they got an RV in my face. But I can't, I ain't got time to love you. I ain't got time to love you, girl. All right, all right, we, we coming to a spot. We gonna be buffering a little bit. So we gonna be buffering a lot. Bruh, come on. Bruh. Oh. He busy yelling at his old lady, man. He ain't, he can't see. I can't turn, he just letting, yelling at your wife, man. You know she came here to buy them shoes. You know she wanted to buy them shoes. All right, all right, all right. We good, this is good enough. I'm pulling in. <laughs> uh, not good enough. I'm gonna go out here where all these trucks and it's just so, no, nah, it's, it's dirty over there. All right, I'm gonna pull right here. That trucker looked like, that trucker looked like he was in the middle of something. I ain't gonna bother him. Okay. We good. I'm going to cut the generator off again. Or should I? Yes. No, yes, we will. Okay, so I'm going to give you a point of view. Can y'all still see me? Because we should be buffering where I am. Hey, the Weekend Gardener Show. Oh, you said you see I'm busy? I just happened to look up and see you. I'm all over the place. Uh, Black Tropical Homestead is still in the house? <laughs> okay, we good. Thank you. So what I'm going to do is give you guys a point of view again of what we did before. I'm going to set up my tripod. I got my charcoal down here and everything. I'm going to set up my tripod so you can see what I'm seeing. Remember earlier when I said um, how to pull the side in? I'm going to show you what this looks like. Everything is unlocked. I'm going to keep this is on as much power as I possibly can because I know my battery is about dead. So we about to do some weird, weird uh, tripoding. Okay, that's sweet. That's how we gonna have to do it because I can't take this power plug off. All right, 
you are literally about to see. I save all my receipts so I can uh, so I can keep track of my fuel and how much that on my dang on power wire. Man, sometimes I'm so smart. I'm dumb. Golly. I put it there so I don't lose it. And now I'm going to use this little whack one. Man, sometimes I'm so smart that I'm dumb. God, you all ever do that? Sometimes you do stuff so smooth on your own that you just a, a moron. We can really move around. Okay. Okay. So what you're about to see, I'm trying to get this at an angle so you can really see the space change this is how much space I'm, I'm gonna see real quick okay you can see how much space i got right this is how much space i got now i'm going to show you exactly how much space we're about to have when you let the slide out now i shouldn't be um demonstrating this because this is lady led's baby right here the whole slide out deal is all her so hang tight all right here we go first off what we gotta do is listen to me first off i gotta put my parking brake on then cut on my jacks i'm about to lower my jacks so hold tight it just take a second here might even be able to see it move. I had to lift the booty up a little bit. Lift up the nose. Keep watching. All right. We are now about to extend. I always got to check around the perimeter to make sure ain't nothing in the way. I'm about to extend the house. That's how much. <clears throat> now, as you just saw, we went from just this right here, remember this, to this, out here. This is what my wife was trying to tell me. So, now that I got my gangster plug, I'm going to hook this into the uh, FF power here. And we're going we gonna to sit a while and we're going to chat. And then we're going to close it out. So I got my FF power. If anybody interested in that, I'll leave a link below after the video. Yes, it's the same as the Bibeen. Yes, it's the same as the Ocotel. There we go. Oh, yeah, we cooking with gas now. So I guess I can answer a few more questions. And then we'll, we'll try to get out of here. All right. Anything did it double in size? It like tripled in size. Yes. It, it literally tripled in size. Let's show us how it looks from the outside extended. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. That's a good one. I don't know how much, how much time I got on this battery. But yeah. All right. Um, I'm not going out my side door because I got too much to do out there. So I'm going to cut my power off. And I'm in a bad spot, so I got to remember I got my tools on me. Because, listen, here's another thing about an RV. Here's another thing about an RV. Okay. L being in an RV, uh, you can get a breaking and entering. And a car jack all at the same time. Okay. <laughs> you can have a house invasion and car jacked all at the same time. So you you kind of got to watch your ass a little bit. You know, where if you're in a sketchy spot, you ain't never been car jacked and 
house jacked at the same time. So you got to watch where you at. Think about that, though. Think about that. You just ain't getting carjacked. You get you getting burglarized. Ugh. Okay. This is the door. Close the door up. Ooh, ooh, man, is you stupid? Open this window. I do not want to get locked out over here. All right. So this is the side that's out. Now those windows are outside instead of right behind me. This is my driver's seat right here. This is where I was. It don't even stick out that far. No, I got one key that I need right now in my pocket. But this is it. So that's all that sticks out. Just that little bit. But it made that much difference. It made that much difference. Does that RV have reverse reserve gas tank? No. Got a 100-gallon tank. If you dumb enough to run out of gas with a 100-gallon tank, you, you, need a, you might need a bicycle. No, no reserve tank. You know, and I'm just joking, too. Uh, let me see. All right. So I'm going to answer some more questions. Let's get plugged back up. Leaves. I got a vacuum. Hold on. Lock my door. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I can answer some questions. It was something I was supposed to be doing, though. I need the vacuum, but I'll do that later. If you if you thinking about vacuuming and cleaning, buy you a little vacuum cleaner. I'm going to show you that, too, in a second. Get you a little vacuum cleaner. All of this stuff you need, just like in your house. Just like in your house. Keep that in your storage closet. Just, just like in your house. And now the generator is off, so I'm not going to plug it into the wall. But I will use... I will be using the FF power. This is the part about the solar that I told you. You don't have to use your big generator. You don't have to use your big gas generator if you got solar. There it is. Now watch this. If you got your solar generator in your RV, you don't have to worry about wasting gas on your generator. <laughs> Normally, when we're set up, I would have my solar panels outside collecting power while I'm using my solar generator. So I'm just using all free energy from the sun to watch my television, to use every appliance in here and everything. All right. So any questions? That's one of them little apartment uh, vacuum cleaners that's perfect for in here. Don't forget to talk about security. Thank you, Weekend Garden Show, little sister. Thank you. Let me show you what I have all around the RV. This right here, something so simple. So simple. You can get these anywhere. Okay. Did you see... Did you see um, 
where I was plugged. I mean, it was sitting on my dashboard. It's been on the dashboard the whole time. Okay, it was plugged up into my wall. So my solar power generator was plugged into the grid here. So this camera with night vision is being powered by my solar power generator. Whatever solar power I'm using. So this camera right here, I got them all around my RV. I got one in the back window. I got one in the front window. And when I park at night, I put one everywhere. So I got about six of these that I put all the way around the perimeter of my RV. They got alarms on them. They got speakers on them. I can talk through them. And no, this ain't even, this is a, um, I got this with my Echo. Uh, this is like a, I don't know what brand it is. Yeah, it is a Blink. It is a Blink. It sure is. I didn't even know that. I got them free with my Echoes and stuff like that. And I just bought a couple of more. I wanted to give them away as gifts, but that went sour. But yeah. So I, I plug these in all around my RV. And at night, I can see everything. That's how I know raccoons. You better, uh, where's my, let me show you something here. This is part of it. When you stop, whether you use a trash can or whatever, right? This is one of the things I use outside because, see my trash in there? Because raccoons will go all in your food, all in your trash. See, with, with it like this, they're going to have a hard time. They ain't gonna be, they'll try to take this whole thing with them before they can mess, make a mess. So this is one of our trash cans that we use for all kind of stuff. Uh, yes, that was a blink camera. Hell, I didn't even know. So any questions? So that's part of the security. I also have um, a perimeter. Let me show you this. I have a perimeter security as well. Where did it go? Water filters, binocular. You need something to cut your wood. You need your radios. Where's my perimeter alarm? I got more water. I put so many water systems in here. Hold on. Water repellent. I know I used them. Okay, this is one of them. I was about to say, I know I use them, but this is a, this is one of the, the things right here. The ones that's already out, I don't know where they are. I ain't going to keep on looking for them. But you, this is a string that goes around your perimeter. This, this chain goes around the perimeter all the way around. You hook this in a central location. So if somebody trips the line, this thing goes off and it's loud as all get out. Where is the thing at? I don't, I'm not going to do this. I'll burst, I'll burst my ears out. That's how loud it is that I'm not going to do it. But you will stick this wherever you want to stick it to. I usually just stick it to a tree or stick it to my bumper. The brand, it's a, uh, a caps. I didn't even know when I first got it. I got this from, uh, Academy sports. I got it from Academy sports and it's just a per perimeter alarm so if somebody ends up tripping the alarm around your perimeter this will go off and you will know somebody is in the perimeter do you tow your vehicle with your rv no no we just we just take our uh, motorcycles and mini bikes from now on bringing that car with you is it's so dangerous god it's so dangerous bumping some country music what's the smartest way to buy one that i don't understand that question what is the smartest way to buy an rv the same smartest way to buy a, a car it's no different do your research know what you want um <clears throat> know what you want do your research Find the best price. And I'm going to be honest with you. Don't even go trying to look for the best price because prices are horrible. I personally would not finance one. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Not in these days and times. I wouldn't finance uh, an RV at all. 
would you put up a link? Yeah, after the video. What year is too old? There's no such thing. What car is too old? If somebody took care of the craft, there is no such thing. What are the thoughts on pool and tow campers? I don't, I don't care for them because I like to be close with my family while I'm riding down the road. Um, if you, you cannot put people in a, a pool behind camper or a fifth wheel. You can't put people in those riding down the road. That's highly illegal and super dangerous. So I like everybody being in here with me, my whole family being here chilling while I'm just driving right there. That's that's everything to me. So that's why I go with an RV over a, either a Class A, B, or C over a pool behind any day. Um, yeah, you can't do that, man. I've seen people do it, though. Man, that's dangerous. I get away from people. When I see people inside that camper, I get away from them. Would it be better to buy used or new RVs? If you, That's completely up to you. If you find a used one that's in great shape, mine is in great shape. That that's you got to use your common sense. Is it good to you buy a used car or a new car? Whatever sense that you made with that, this is the same thing. But you got to remember something. This is the other part that's going to help you decide what to buy. Um This is a home this is a house on wheels, literally. So it's like, what do you buy? A used house that somebody lived in or a brand new house? It's no different. Most people don't care about somebody lived in here for generations and generations, right? It's no different. So this is a home to me. This is my house that I can just go and park anywhere. Like right now, I'm just in the middle of nowhere. And I can go to sleep and ain't nobody going to bother me. How does yours hold? I don't understand your question. Yeah, and you said and used ones is high. The price of used RVs and used automobiles have skyrocketed. Because this is why. Because people are getting evicted. People are getting kicked out of their homes for all the stuff that's been going on for the last four years. People don't have nowhere to live. So I'm going to tell you this right here. Owning an RV, if you paying rent at $1,000 or more a month, or you paying a mortgage at $1,000 or more a month, think about this. Do the research with me. I bought this for, what was it, ten or 12000 cash. I don't owe nobody for this, right? Stick with me. All across America, I can go and park my RV right here until the cops come knocking, frankly. Or I can go to an RV park or some big KOA campground. I can go to some campground and spend $50 a night. $50 a night. And if you catch them on a good deal, man, please. If you catch them, weekly rents is cheaper than daily rents. Monthly rents is cheaper than weekly rents. Yearly rents is cheaper than monthly rents. So the longer you stay, the less you pay. It's like one of those um extended stay hotels or motels. You ever seen those? It's no different than that. It's like an extended stay motel or hotel. It could be $50 a night. It could be $50 every two nights. Whatever it is, every place is different. But you control that. You control where you want to be. So the price that you're paying in mortgage, you could be paying out there and living in your own house and not have to worry about it. And say, say you're trying to save up some money to make some kind of power move. Don't go park in no RV park. Go start bouncing around to parking lots. Hit every Walmart, every Publix, anybody that'll let truck stops, anybody that'll let you spend a night for free. It's not savory, but it'll help you save some money, too. I'm just putting something on your temple. That's right, Black uh, Black's Tropical Homestead. I'm in my own house with my own stuff. And uh, and I don't got to ask nobody, where is everything at? Uh, 
No. Yeah, boondocking. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm in a, I'm in a grocery store parking lot and I'm sitting here chilling. What do you think about the RVs, the pool with the truck? Um, I answered that a million times. I keep answering it. I don't care for them. I like drive, pick up and drive. Let's start here. A RV versus a camper to me. Here's the best part about a camper. How do you protect yourself? And can I ask that? The same way I protect myself in my house at home. Same way. And I just talked about security. Cameras. What did I do with the blink? Cameras and tools. Cameras, tools, alarms that you put on your door and you put around your perimeter, whatever. You know, you, you got to use your head. Hell, a string with pots and pans attached to it. Uh, you know something else? I forgot about one. I bought a bunch of cowbells. I'm going to show y'all when I get home. A bunch of cowbells that you put on a string and wrap around the trees. You'd be surprised how you can't see that when it's hooked to fishing line. You can't see it. So, um, I, it was another question that somebody asked. Um, if you had a little land, could you let folks sit there RV on? you could make a little extra money. Yes, you could, but you also run into a lot of problems too. Yes, you could do that and make a little extra money, but I'm telling you, people don't do that very often because usually the people that want to park their RVs on your land for a little while probably got somebody tied up in the bathroom. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just putting that out there and being for real. It's just too much. So, um, Sleep with one eye open, gripping the pillow at night. I'm, I'm going to make me something else to drink because I'm parched. I ain't had no drink since we left the house. <clears throat> oh, what I do with my water? I almost broke my dog on jar. But see, I'm at home. I got, I got survival food in here if i if i needed it i got some food to survive on i got water to survive on i got food water i got all my extra clothes in the back socks i can go take me a shower i can go wash up i can stay right here tonight we just messing around right we just messing around but i can literally stay right here and not have to do nothing. I got everything. All the comforts of home I got right here. Look, TV. I can cut TV on where's my remote? Right here. All I do is hook my TV to my uh to my phone and I can watch whatever. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I forgot to hook the dog on. Let me cut the generator on. Just for a second. You heard all the air kicked on everything. So all you got to do, when the TV come on, all you got to do is hook it to your phone and you can watch whatever because I don't think there's no Wi-Fi where I am right now. And you can watch whatever the heck you want. Just like you'll be doing on your phone, you can just do that in real life. Just on TV so everybody else can watch. Got to get my tang popping. I'm going to have to wash dishes. I got that air blast. Okay. So that's it. Yes, Tang. <laughs> so um, there we go. Love to convert a van. I just don't get it. Most people that go off trying to convert them vans fail. Let me cut this, this off so y'all so can hear me. I ain't even hot. I just wanted to get my point across. Okay, let's see.
Thank you, Area 51. Said, Led, that's exactly where I'm at now. I've been looking at a Class B Campers, Mercedes, Ford, Dodge, and Sprinter van class. I live in Dallas, Texas, and the rent is outrageous. I'm paying $1,600 $1, a month for rent. Woo! Girl, man. Oh, my God, man. Look, if it's some kind of way you can take your super chat back, you're going to need it more tonight. Woo! God. Man, let me tell you something. I normally don't get in people's business. Man, get out of there. <laughs> I, I normally don't give people personal advice like that. Man, get out of there. Get the hell out of there. Fast. Get out of there. Oh, that's that's rough, man. Now, here's another thing, y'all. Here's the other part about having your RV. You, if, you're, if, <clears throat> if you're staying for the night, right? I literally can go over here. I'm, I'm going to take you with me. Go over here. Cook me a meal on my stove where I ain't even got to be outside with people. See, I could be out of town. See the highway? I could be out of town in some other town. I go over there, cook me a meal, and pour me a, a glass of uh, um, wine or something, right? Sit here, pull out my table, have me a meal and a drink. And guess what? It's not drinking and driving. As long as my park brake is down in the RV, as long as my park brake is down and my jacks are touching the ground, I can sit here and have a drink. I just can't leave. I can sit here because it is now a permanent fixed item. True story. So... You could be in here having a good time. Police pulled up. Say I'm drinking something. I'm drinking on some real stuff, right? Say the police not going to do it. What you drinking? Um, do say. <laughs> Long as I'm not sitting in that driver's seat. And my jacks is down. And my brake is on. When he come in here, I can even. Oh, would you like a beer, officer? For maybe when you get off work or something. You're at home. Some of the rules change when you're in your RV. Some of the rules change. Right, and the keys can't be in the ignition. Mine is, but I ain't drinking nothing. So, right, and the keys can't be in the ignition. Thank you so much, Bob Moss. I, did, I know this was a long video, but I hope, I hope it helps everybody because I wanted you to see even more. I had planned on doing this for the rest of the day. I really did. I was going to get it all done because I want some air in my tires. I need to top up on fuel. I need to go through the car wash. And we're about to get it, do spring cleaning in here because I still, I still haven't done it yet. So any questions family for we call it a day we've been on here a long time next time bring lady led she was a little busy so and plus she took she took little led to work so i i tried to get her as a matter of fact i don't know if y'all heard me ask her to come with me and we could drop him off at work in rv that would have been embarrassing to say <laughs> <coughs> drop my baby boy off at work in the rv See you, son. We love you. So, no more questions. All I'm going to do, I think I'm going to sit here for a little longer. Pull this in. And then... uh 
head on back, I guess. Where did you buy your RV? I bought I bought it from some somebody. I, I was looking on Facebook Market. Try Facebook Market. Thank you, Roz Marie. How many does it sleep? A lot. What state are you in? What's name now? Um. <laughs> Somebody said never loan your RV. Absolutely not. Oil changes and maintenance is expensive. No, it's no different than a car. So cheap you can do it yourself. I would take this doghouse cover off so you can see the engine, but it's a it's a trip to get back on. Led did a mechanic check put you before I don't I can't understand it. Did uh, I I don't know what that was. Can I grow asparagus in a container? I don't know, can you? I'm not sure. You might want to Google that one. How many miles are too many? There's no such thing. There's no such thing. What are average costs of RV in today's market? That's that's a in, invalid question. It's not about y'all. Listen, people be. Possibly connect the solar, but give me, give things. Here's the thing. Everybody is thinking like, with these questions, you're thinking like there's a set number that you, there is no set number for everything, family. And I understand this new generation, everything got so many rules to it, like directions. Everything don't need those directions. Like some women can't find a man because the man is supposed to look like this, make this much money, have this much stuff by a certain age. He should have accomplished this, that, this, that, and this. And then the woman be lonely because the man didn't meet up to some criteria or some standard that she read in some magazine that was written by another lonely woman. We are forgetting how to feel. We are forgetting how to do our own research in life. And you think everything is supposed to happen in your life it need to be told to you by them two twin brothers on house hunters and stuff. No. You got to know what you want. People like, how many does it sleep? It don't even matter to you. Which RV do you want, would you like, and how many does it sleep? I'm going to tell you this. To answer everybody to ask me the question, how many does it sleep? And I keep saying how many ever I wanted to. Because I'm hood, son. I have people sleeping up on top of the dog on microwave. I'm hood. I don't care how many beds it got. I have people. Look, look, look. Want to see a bed? There go a bed right there. I can sit up there and lay down on that dashboard. I'll put some pillows up in that junk. Roll them doggone blinds down. That's a whole nother bed for a couple babies. Right there. That is not in the brochure. That's not in the brochure. That's not in the manual. I'm hood as hell. It's some steps right down here. I got a nephew that like to sit down there and go to sleep for some reason. I don't even question him because that's less space he taking up. I don't know why he like to sleep down on the steps. We got to cut it out with all the bougie crap that we do and the stuff and the standards and the rules that we go by because somebody else made them up. Somebody you ain't never seen before made that crap up. 
No, family. You know, that's like, that's like your family coming over for the holidays, right? Well, I only have a two-bedroom apartment. For poor people, there is no damn such thing as a two-bedroom apartment. You understand? When your people come over, them boys is sleep on the couch, on the floor, in the kitchen, in the attic, in the bathtub. Man, ain't no rules. So I know what the manual say how many I'm supposed to have in here. <laughs> it also tells me I should go see the Grand Canyon. I don't want to see the Grand Canyon. That's somebody else's dream. That's whoever made this bus's dream. That's not my dream. So it's life is what you make it. And that's the point I'm trying to drive home to you. When you're in an RV, there is no rules. The only time, the only time rules apply. That's the freedom. See, that's the freedom you got. The only time rules apply is when... Somebody knock on your door and tell you you can't park here. That's the only time rules apply. Other than that, you free to do and go wherever you want. Half of them, somebody said, and pallets of sleeping bags. You don't even need no sleeping bag, man. Take that hoodie off. Put your legs through the armhole. Yeah, you know I mean, yo. Nah, do we, hey, there's a drying towel hanging on the dog on. Uh, Y'all be wondering why black people drying towels in the kitchen be so big. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. That's a that's a kitchen drying towel. It ain't supposed to be, though. You see it? Well, y'all wonder why black folks kitchen towels be so big hanging off the refrigerator and, and the stove and stuff. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because if it come down to it, son... Hey, man, I'm freezing. Go grab that kitchen towel. <laughs> Go grab that kitchen towel. Wrap up with that. Because it's a whole blanket. We're going to use it for everything. N nothing. I don't go shopping for face towels. Because face towels are going to send you to a certain aisle and they're going to cost a fortune. No. I go to the automotive section and get them 100% cotton uh, shop towels. Now you got a washcloth, a face towel, a drying towel, a floor buffer, a, 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 a Mazel Tov cocktail maker. You look, hey, who, 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 a blanket. That's how big they is. A fire starter. I don't, I don't roll in them categories some of these questions sit in. I don't. And I understand some people, that's all they base their life on. I don't. I don't. Toothbrush. Toothbrush. When a toothbrush, I get tired of it. Now it's a shoe cleaner, a buffer. to get the crumbs out of the cracks of my car. That I hold on to a toothbrush. I got toothbrushes in my toolbox and in my gun box to do everything. And everybody, if you own a firearm, you know what you know. You know, like I know, a toothbrush work better than half of the doggone whack brushes they try to sell you at the gun store, don't they? You got you got to use your brains, man. You got to use your brains. We all spoil and we forgetting how to really do it. We forgetting how to do it. Because somebody on the internet is telling us what you should and what you shouldn't be doing. And you're listening. You're not challenging it. Challenge me even. I don't know everything. Somebody asked me a minute ago, can you grow asparagus in a bucket? You could grow whatever you want in a bucket. The real question is, will you grow enough food in the bucket to really have a meal? You will have one meal by growing asparagus in a bucket. You will spend plenty of money trying to fertilize, water, pamper, care for asparagus in a bucket. Was that asparagus worth it? That's 
the real question. Okay, you can grow anything in a container. The question is, is it stupid or not? I retract that word stupid. Is it worth it or not? No, it's not. Because you're going to get a couple of, even in their prime, after a few years, you'll get a couple of asparagus and you're done. It's not, it's not reality. It's not productive. It's a waste of time and energy and space. So, I'm sorry. Was I raving? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. I just, I just think, man, it's so, so much common sense stuff. Like somebody, the woman that bought the new RV, right? The woman that bought the new RV thought her idea of buying a new RV was better than me buying an old RV. In her book, she feels like she got a warranty. She got a couple years warranty, maintenance and stuff like that. And she got a new model which today means nothing because it could be brand spanking new and be falling apart. Well, I got one that's old, seasoned, everything is tight. It's like a, like a, 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 a cougar. It's like a cougar. An older woman, body tight, face tight, makeup tight. She got some miles on her, you know. But she making them new young girls look bad. You know? You got a, one of them older ladies, them cougars, old panther, that you got to ask them how old they is. You need to make sure. You need to make sure. Like, ma'am, miss, I, I don't even know which one to call. Ma'am, miss, you don't know. That's, that's, everything's still tight. It don't matter how old it is. If everything, you can still bounce a quarter off that boy. You know? That's why somebody said, how old is too old with your RV? How many miles are too many miles? It's no different than people. If it's been taken care of, there's no such thing. Because it's some cougars out there that have people writing home to their mamas. And you see what I'm saying? These young girls better watch out. These young girls better, these young girls better, better, <laughs> you better watch out. There's some older ladies out there look younger than, than some of these teenagers and, and body tighter too. And they're giving y'all, y'all think y'all competition is somebody from another race? No, it's not. It's a cougar. <laughs> it's a cougar, boy. Uh, Robin Caesar say I love uh, ranch dressing. This is for the guy. That, Thank you for that, Robin Caesar. Thank you. It ain't y'all talk about this other other race women is taking y'all men. No, it ain't. I'm telling you the real deal. No, it's not other races taking y'all mans. It's y'all aunties taking y'all mans. It's y'all own aunties taking y'all men. <laughs> Cause you won't stop going to Whataburger with extra chili. While you keep going through the drive-thru, your auntie is at a uh, world gym, Planet Fitness, doing booty squats. She down there with them weights on her shoulder doing these. <laughs> and you like, give me, uh-uh, give me extra chili. Uh-uh, they did, no, no, they did not. Where's my, I said a large fry. Keep on playing. Keep on playing. While your auntie at Planet Fitness doing booty squats. And you eating chili fries. So, you got to use your common sense. <laughs> you got to use your common sense out here. All right? I mean it. You got to start knowing when, when right is right, wrong is wrong. You're going looking for an a, a, a RV. It might have a little damage here. It might have a little crack here. It might have a little. 
man, but is it running good? Like a man, yeah, he might have a little gut. Yeah, he don't work at the best job, but do he treat you good? Do he take care of his business? Do he take care of his children? You know, yeah, I know his hairline is about here. But is he good? Do he smell good? Do he smell good, ladies? Because I know a lot of these young brothers, man. I done walked up. What's up, homie? What's up, homie? <laughs> I done gave some young brother some dap. And when he reach out and hit that thing and bring it in, my nose is like... It's a grown-ass man. What? Have you ever... Pull somebody close to you and they smell so bad it made you check yourself. Like, I hope that wasn't me. Like, you must not know. What? Nothing? Gr whole grown ass man. So, ladies, sometimes, you know, if he, if, do he smell good? Did he take, did he wash up today? Did he put some soap on it? Because, listen, hey, <laughs> I don't know who made up the myth. The balls don't go sour. I don't know who made up that myth. <laughs> but when I be telling like, when every time you hear me say like a sack of balls, they go bad too. It's like <laughs> sitting an old meatloaf on the counter for about three days over the pilot light on them old stoves. <laughs> See that? Yeah, they go bad too. They they turn to a them balls turn to a life of crime as well. So, it, did he wake up today and he put some soap on himself? You know what I'm saying? That's how we judge life. Stop going off of what your friend picked for you. Stop going up, girl. He fine. She think he fine. Somebody tell you which RV to pick. Now that's the one you want. That ain't what you want. That's what he want. That's what she want. You know, pick, pick, pick what you pick what you gonna do. Yeah, like an old sack of nickels. Yeah, but old whole wet crown crown royal bag of, of pennies. <laughs> yeah, hey, them balls go bad on you, man. They turn to a life of crime. I tell, I tell you what. Woo! An old wet crown royal bag full of pennies, too. The pennies been in there so long, they stuck together. They done fused together. Now, all you smell is, is, is <laughs> copper. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Oh, my God. So... Yeah, I'm just I'm just messing around now, y'all. I'm just I hope this helped you. This video been like a billion hours long. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why we keep coins and royal, crown royal bags. They good bags though. Um, let me see. Any questions before I go? Yes, common sense, man. We got to use it. Now, that's what I said yesterday, too. Remember, remember, these is real people that's walking around here and around our communities and our universe that think like this. Be careful. Be mindful of what you say to people because you don't know if they comprehend. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go ahead and reel it all in. So many questions, but this is the right place to ask them. I told you, I'm going to keep on answering questions until I get off. Did a mechanic check out your RV before you bought it? Yes, me. Me. I was never a certified mechanic, but my wife can tell you I'm a gearhead. I'm a, I'm a, what they call it, a closet gearhead. I'm not anymore, though. I'm recovering. All right. <laughs>
assumptions. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Do you bring people on here as well on live? When you say, do I bring people on here as well as live? What do you mean? Like that, uh, that, um, stream yard thing. I don't, I don't do that too much. I don't, I don't really care for that. Do you keep it under a tarp or out in the sun? It doesn't matter. <clears throat> That's totally up to you. I don't keep mine under a tarp. I'm going to tell you why I don't keep it under a tarp. Because it does kind of, it does save your roof and everything else from the sun. But you look under one of them tarps. I live in the south. You'll find something living up under that tarp that did more damage to your roof and your components on the roof under that tarp. They're just leaving it out in the open. I promise. I promise. If you if you leave, <clears throat> if you put a dog on tarp on that thing, you lift that tarp up. Everything with two legs and no legs gonna fly and slither from out from up under that dog on tarp, and they done built nests all up in your air conditioning system they don't is eggs up there snake eggs because they like that heat they love that heat birds snakes squirrels so yeah no I don't do the tarp thing. Not in the South. You might could do it, get away with it in the North, but you can't you can't get away with that in the South. I saw a neighbor of mine deal with that. And I seen him taking his tarp off around the holiday because he was about to go somewhere. And that sucker was dancing around. I could see him like he about four, five houses down. I'm like, what happened in the Frank? Damn, what's on him? And I seen him swatting the tarp and he running around oh i think some bees got him no whatever it was is up in that tarp because now he messing with that tarp i don't i rats could be rats i don't do that ain't nothing funnier than seeing a seeing a neighbor get attacked by something but you don't know what's going on <laughs> they far away <laughs> they far away and you just sitting there looking like what the hell is wrong with frank and them how do you keep bugs out of your vents? Um, <clears throat> now that is a good question. You know what I do sometimes? I put uh these hangers. I got one too. Mothball, little mothball hangers. I will put them, hang them up in here, and don't nothing like mothballs. But when we start to leave to go on a trip, I take them, I take them out. Uh, no problem, said. Thanks for telling me about it. No problem, Benita. Uh, you are definitely at home now. I told you, man, I'm at the house, man. I'm about to make me a sandwich or something. I'm going to kick my shoes off, man. I'm, I'm ready to get some sleep. Let me see. That's about it. Iris, Iris spring soap, cheap fabric softener sheets. Okay. How do you keep rats out? Same way you keep them out of your normal house. You might need some poison. Some traps. Okay, I, I guess that's going to be it. I, I'm going to reel it in because now I'm starting to get too comfortable. In the, somebody's in the sunshine, man. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> Thank you so much, LaDawn. Thank you. Main course encouragement. How you doing? Say, uh, we had to get a cat and dog repellent in our yard for around the corner neighbor. Oh, man, that's rough. Rats hate peppermint. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. What about a tiny home on a trailer? What about it? You you gonna get you one? You want a tiny home on a trailer? 
I don't even understand. Um, I don't understand that at all. That tiny home stuff. People buy tiny homes, but they want a whole three-story house worth of crap inside of it. The whole premise for a tiny home is to be just living free. But people taking out $30,000 mortgages for a Home Depot shed full of bullshit. I never understood that. At first, it was great. At first, the whole idea of the tiny home was great. But then it got, it got stupid real quick. People want a updated side loader or top, yeah, side loader, washer and dryer in it and all the latest fan dangle television sets, my big screen. You lost me. You lost me after that. And everybody wanted those big, those tiny home. You want tiny home with big shit in it. I never understood that. That's another one where we talk about the common sense factor. I don't get it. I don't get it. You want to be stepping over all of this stuff. You you can you can cook, wash dishes, watch TV and take a dump all at the same time. That's how much space you got. Without moving a muscle. But you want $30,000 worth of electronics in it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I never did. People keep asking me about tiny homes. I ain't got nothing to say about it. Because I thought tiny home, you go build you a shed somewhere. Get you a bucket, fill it with sawdust to take a dump. And, you know, put out some rain buckets, catch some rain water, and, and try to make the best of it. That's what I thought it was about. But it got dumb. They even made television shows off of it, right? Lynn, can I ask about water filtering? Yes, I have an inline filter when I have it, the line hooked on the grid. And when we using it uh, just out of our tanks, I bring the Berkey in here. Uh, I bring the Berkey in here and we filter it through the Berkey. I also have survival filters right down here. Right down here. I got a bunch of these. Sawyer, I got, I got the, no, 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 that's not it. That's the insect repellent. I got all kind of stuff in here. I got the water tablets. I got the sippers, the Sawyer sippers for filtration. I got everything up under there. Thank you for that. Who was that? Thank you for that journey under the sun. Said, uh, my birthday. Happy birthday. Um. So yeah, there we go. You welcome journey under the sun. Thank you, Cali Homestead with Pooh Bear. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> said lay RV is for me after watching chilling in your. It just makes sense. It man, what it look. This is it. This is it. And and for them for them folks out there that's single, man. And if you think if you're thinking about being single, you better go buy an RV. Cause she gonna take the house. You can hang that up. It ain't too many lawyers out there that can get a man keep his house. <laughs> it ain't too many of them. So if you know you on you on the rocks, you on the coals, if you know you in some trouble, you might want to spend that last little money, get you an RV, put in your mama name or something. <laughs> Cause she get in the house, man. There's a lot of brothers out there, man. It's a lot of brothers out there. It's homeless, man. I don't care who fought it is, that ain't none of my concern. I'm just saying it's a whole bunch of brothers out there that's homeless, you know. Cause she got the house, she got the kids. You gotta pay alimony, uh, uh, child support, matrimony, palimony, uh, money love. You gotta pay it all, and you live in a um, you live in a frigidaire box at the park. 
you live you live in a uh a dual door refrigerator box. And they be wondering why these men be so mad, man. Have you ever came home, put a welcome mat in front of a, a deep freezer box? <laughs> Go home. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, fellas. I ain't laughing at you. Oh, I'm just I'm just tripping. That's all. Whew. Put down. Home sweet home in front of a refrigerator box. And you had to ask your aunt, could you put it in her backyard? So you have somewhere to put the box. It's rough out here, man. It's rough. So you you might want to invest in you a, a get a pop up camper, get you like a a camper. You better sell that Benz and that Chevy and get you a pickup truck so it's something you can pull your camper with. I ain't playing. Last question I know I asked already. What are your thoughts on getting travel trailers with no title? Facebook market has a lot of them without titles. Earlier, someone suggested salvage title. Thoughts? My thoughts. What? Well, let me see. My sister. Was that my sister? My sister Tiffany. My dear... My question to you is, I'm, my answer is a question. Would you buy a car with no title? Would you buy a car if you didn't know where it came from or who it really used to belong to or who it still belonged to? I'm just saying, I need, I need you to think about that. Just because it's an RV don't make, don't make the rules different. Think about it. I wouldn't, would you even buy, I ain't going to say that. I was about to say like a, a computer or a television off the street. You don't know where it came from. If, if I always think like this. If a person is selling a vehicle with no title, I if the car is salvaged, I need to know, if it has a salvage title, I need to know why. If it has a salvage title because it was in a flood and they fixed it and it's ready, I get it. I'm with it. <clears throat> if it has a, a salvage title because it was in an accident and totaled out, that's what usually that means. But baby girl, if, if they don't tell you where this car came from, they don't know nothing about it. What can you do with it? It's just like a house. Somebody give you a house, right? If they gave you a house and you don't, you there's no way to see if somebody, they might be on vacation. And somebody just sold you this beautiful house on four acres for $10,000. $10,000, you think you suckered them. You waiting on the paperwork and then the family come home. <laughs> You ain't got to do all that now. He, heard, he saw you. He saw you. Somebody just angry. Somebody just angry. <laughs> yeah. But listen, my friend, don't do it. Don't do it. All you're going to do is, is pay a lot of money for a lot of heartache and trouble. Don't do it. Got road rage in the parking lot. Golly. Uh, you can get registered. <clears throat> you can't get registered. Uh, oh, you can't register a stolen RV at BMV. You can't register. You know how many hoops they make you jump through to try to find a title to vehicles? Even if it's legit. Even if it's legit. Do you know how much legal mumbo jumbo you got to... For instance, have you ever bought have you ever bought a, a trailer with no title? If you ever bought now, that's something people do a lot, especially here. Hell, I bought a trailer with no no nothing to it. Here's the thing: if you try to go down and get that done through the DMV, you gotta go 
jump through so many legal hoops to get a title for the trailer. You got to go have it way. This is what I had to do. It wasn't even worth the price I paid for my trailer. Hell, I could have pretty much bought a new one. You got to go have your trailer weighed. You got to have it inspected. Then you got to turn around. They got to make up a title for you. All of them fees. By the time I was done with fees to register my trailer, shit, I could have bought a brand new one. Where would you start researching if you knew nothing were to start from square one? I would go to the nearest place where they sell RVs and campers and just go in and look inside all of them. That's where I would start. If I didn't know nothing about an RV, <clears throat> nothing, I would go to a place where they sell brand new and used RVs and campers. And I will walk in and outside of each and every last one of them. Look at the stuff you like. Look at the stuff you don't like. Look at things that you want. Put them on your list. Start asking about the engine. Start asking all your questions to the salesperson. And you're going to gain knowledge by doing that. Then go to another place to do it. Me and Lady Leia used to go out of town and go to places and just do that. Spend a whole day looking at campers. We didn't know nothing about them. That's how I got my first boat. I didn't know nothing about a damn boat. But I started going to places to sell boats. Then I started going to the um, conventions, boat conventions. And I started knowing more, got knowledgeable till I knew what I was uh, talking about. So now you know what to ask. When you go to a private seller, you know what questions to ask them because they know if you're bullshitting and if you know what you're talking about or not. So that's what, that's what I would do. If you got a friend that or you know somebody you know at your job or something that has an rv ask them would could you just take a look that'll start everything i promise you any anything else uh traveling rv shows yes traveling rv shows uh right now Look online for your area for your local traveling RV and boat show. Yes. Yes, do that. You will love those. Me and Lady Leah went to a billion of them. Uh, with no title, they can turn around and claim you stole the vehicle and lose it. Yep, very true. You, you're welcome, grown in the yard. I just don't want to see nobody get, get jammed up. Because this world is ruthless right now, man. This world is cutthroat. And when we go over to LBX73 channel, I, I got something to tell y'all about. Uh, I got some, some important news for y'all to listen to when I go over there. LBX73 is my other channel where we talk about just straight real stuff. So, okay, I'm going to get out of here because I'm way too comfortable. I'm way too comfortable. And my wife is probably like, she's probably looking at me like, what is this fool doing? Where is he at? So, all right. All right, y'all. I guess that's it. I guess let me round it all up. I ain't going to have y'all go through all this. Me wrapping all this stuff back up. Mm. Shoot, yeah. I, I'm about ready for me a nap, too. Ooh. <clears throat> so, won't you be, won't you be, please won't you be my neighbor? <sighs> Let me see. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm going to get out of y'all hair. 
thank you for coming along with me because this was this is always fun for me i just hope it was fun for you and gave you a little bit of insight we're going to be doing more rv shows and i'm even going to try to rent something uh rent a space very soon just so you can see how it is and i'm, a, I'm going to keep everybody got cameras going all night long for different reasons i think i'm gonna try that so you can really see all night long like lionel richie in an rv the good the bad and the ugly it ain't always good okay so i'm just gonna have my camera going and y'all can come with us and join us on some kind of crazy adventure so you get a chance to see how much stuff you need you need your utensils you need your supplies you need your food you need spoons forks knives plates cups bowls everything you need in your house you need in here all right so everybody have a wonderful night uh tomorrow tomorrow we will be talking about another electronic so i'm gonna bring that to you tomorrow all right Lev Farmer 73, I love y'all. Let me get up out of here. I love you, and I'm out.